This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, AlphaBrain. AlphaBrain is the first fully balanced nootropic designed to increase focus and mental drive. For our listeners, get up to 10% off when you use promo code Rooster at onnit.com slash gaming. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash gaming. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere, on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Support this podcast and get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. Hey everyone, welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Hey! hey podcast. Hey. Gus, Gus Gavin, internet. Jack, Bernie, and Gus. Yes, it is Gus. Wait, did you start with yourself and end with yourself? <laughs> the, from the beginning and the end. <laughs> You're the alpha. The alpha and, and the, the omega. omega. Uh, Welcome, guys. We've got another. Po- I never listen to the intros and always criticize you on the intros. I noticed. Like, what do you mean you never listen? Well, like he just starts naming people and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like not paying attention. Bernie's like conserving <laughs> energy. Yeah. I'm like, listen, dude. I'm like, what is running back, through waiting. your head right now? I was actually tweeting uh, to the audience and saying that we're about to start the Rooster Teeth podcast. What should we talk about? Tweet us with hashtag. RT podcast. But we never check the tweets. I do. I, I check them right here all the time. time. How many times do I bring up like so and so ass? So did Twitter fix their API yet, or Oops. is it still broken? No, they, I mean it's not What's broken. It? It's the, it's working the way it's supposed to work now. So it's not working. <laughs> it's not working for what we need. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, look right here. I well, got all the tweets I need. Yeah, but you have I'm to refresh it. that man. He has right. all the tweets. It pops up. It pops up. Yeah. All right. So, I think see it loads. Yeah, I, there, there. I, can just, I can read it from here. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, my like favorite that. RT podcast crew. Thanks, awesome exponent. Um, <laughs> so why is the iPhone so shitty at loading animated GIFs? Why is the I, well, I don't think it is this bad. Is I don't it? think it's bad. Or is it just like slow websites that can't? I've seen push on the, the uh, Reddit browser built-in browser it actually loads them all right. Mm-hmm. What's a Reddit built-in browser? You know when you Reddit has like a link. Yeah. That you click that. What do you mean? What's a built-in? I don't know what built-in browser means. Is there a Reddit means. app that you're talking about? Oh, you're using a Reddit app? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Which one do you use? I don't know. I barely use Reddit. It's, I don't know. Reddit something? <laughs> yeah. Great. Typical, typical Gavin. Let me tell you about something. Then we ask somebody else. I, I don't know. I don't care about yeah, that. Me, I never used that thing. Uh, let me see. So we have, you're so, like a hipster unto yourself. Yeah, it's called Alien Blue, apparently. <laughs> you're, you're cooler than yourself. You're like, oh, I did this thing the other day. I did it. It was really crazy. What was it? Ah, fuck it. I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. I can't be bothered. Right, it seems like any time I try to cl- I, I try to load an animated GIF, it just like it's stuck on the first frame forever. Then it loads a couple of frames and it's stuck, and then I'm seeing the end of it, and then it's like replaying. You know, it what does I'm, it, yeah, it loads know? and it starts and loads and then like it keeps going back and forth. And that, and that is old technology. It should be super fast at this point. Right. I don't you know, <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid, but uh, airplanes on American Airlines, the Wi-Fi. It, for whatever reason, breaks animated GIFs. It's the one thing like you can't do. Well, it probably doesn't want you to chug their internet on a dumb... It's a fucking animated GIF. It's not that big. I actually had some... Although some people fuck around, they make like these big, long, like, minute-long animated GIFs We now. made a 4K animated GIF once. Yeah. Okay. When are we doing the 5K? Was it, was it two frames? We should. Yeah. It was two frames. <laughs> and it was like 16 megabytes. It was me Jeez. doing this. Um, yeah, what, this. Someone explained <laughs> that the reason animated GIFs don't load on flights like that is they probably have a proxy server. So it grabs just like the first frame of the image. They, I read somewhere that it was an image like, uh, like the, they, they have their own built-in compression to modify the images to be as tight as possible, and then it just breaks animated gifts. Tight, tight, tight. What else do you know about animated gifts? Uh, well, here's nothing that I know. <laughs> what does it stand for? Uh, graphics interface, right? Interchange format. Interchange format. Uh, that's what I said. Close enough. In, in, my, <laughs> in my own way, that's what I said. Nice hat. Thanks, dude. You're probably thinking of GUI. What does JPEG stand for? Something group? Jumbly O-Pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I, I, I really don't know. Just, uh, j- uh, it was John, John JPEG actually Pink made j- the first one. <laughs> John JPEG? <laughs> yeah. He's J-Pig. Swedish. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Swedes. He's from Reykjavik. Um, Tower Pimps is in uh, oh, yeah, Minecraft yeah, yeah. now. Dude, that was, it's, it's cool that Tower Pimps is now in the tutorial level of the new title update for the Xbox version. But um, the coolest thing was, while we were playing another Let's Play, we were playing a Rainbow Six Let's Play, I got killed, so I was out, and I was just browsing the Rooster Teeth subreddit, and someone, like, it popped up, it was like, Tower of Pimps, and, and Minecraft, and I was like, what? And then you hear us all reacting to that, and then Ray actually went and found it, and we all freak out, and like, in the audio. So we have the audio of us discovering it, which is pretty cool. And you've already recorded and released a video, though, that shows you guys 
demonstrating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we show where it is in the tutorial level. That was but like, have you released the Let's Play that has you guys discovering? No, that'll probably be on about three years. <laughs> I've recorded so many days. It's about Let's 30 plays. seconds where I'm just confused. Yeah. I think I thought Ray built it, and I was like, what are you on about? <laughs> so what? Yeah. So, but that, that's pretty badass. That's one of those, like, I mean, we, we've had a few sort of shout-outs by developers, but this is something that Gavin came up with on his drunken state, and uh, now is, is part of the game. Like, that's insane. So, I'm very, and, uh, and we know very it's, proud of myself. We know it's not a fluke because 4J actually tweeted at us and Gavin this morning. So like, it wouldn't be a fluke. Uh, yeah. no, no, you know, that accident. would be an amazing coincidence. Yeah, if they just but I mean, us. like I don't know, but like they specifically called us out. So like, it's like, okay, that's very, very cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah in fact, uh, Gavin and I did a game time yesterday. It's weird timing because uh, we recorded a game time yesterday. We were playing Halo Four. We were playing Ricochet because that came mm -hmm. out, and that's kind of like the spiritual successor to Griff Ball, I would say. And so we were doing, we were talking about that of like different places where Rooster Teeth has been referenced in video games. And then this thing comes up like the day before we record that. That's thing. awesome. It's nice to come full circle back around. You like, they make a game, you play the game, and then it goes back in the game. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's weird. I mean, we've had a lot of stuff like that pop up with Rooster Teeth things. Like there's a, what, um, is it a spider achievement from Gears of War? It was a one or two, I think. Gears of War one, I think. Yeah, that was the uh, stick, like 500 people or something. And then we had, there was the, um, there was a Red Dead Redemption achievement for Chupa Thingy. Chupa Thingy. Yep. And then also there was the, uh, there was another, there was another one in Red Dead Redemption, I want to say, like find a unicorn or something, or like make a unicorn. I forget what it was, but anyway, there, there's been a few call outs. Yeah. And the, uh, um, there's the dishwasher. Yeah. Dishwasher. Those guys actually contacted us to get some materials. They put the achievable system in their game, <laughs> yeah. the entire achievable system. You have to get five achievables in order to get an actual achievement, which is bleep bloop. The most, I think the most in-depth one, uh, that we've barely ever talk about, I don't know why, is the one that's in World of Warcraft, where they recreated oh, yeah. the Blood Gulch fort in, where, where is that, Gus? It's and in, it even has Griffin Simmons in it's it. It's after the Cataclysm expansion. It's in one of the new areas. Not, not Simmons. Simmons isn't it, right? He, Griff talks Griff. about Griff. Simmons. Yeah. Oh, tell, yeah. It's yeah. Griff yeah. yeah. What's the game where there's a in character Blood called Gulch. Griff Simmons? Yeah, Blood Gulch is the, the city. Sorry? Yeah. There's a character called Griff Simmons in some games. Uh, uh, SSX. SSX. And that's a reference as well. Theoretically. Theoretically. Yeah, that was already. weird timing. If it wasn't, it was really weird timing. But we never heard anything specifically about that. Joint Photographic Experts Group. I knew it was Get group. the hell out of here. Oh, I would have wow. never, I didn't know that. Thank you, fat kid baby seat. <laughs> the fat, internet. <laughs> fat kid baby seat. So what is MPEG then? Uh, motion photographic experts group. Is that what it is? Okay. No, I don't know. You think, they just, you think maybe they just, JPEG stood for something, and then when they made motion JPEGs, essentially just called them MPEGs to separate them from motion. JPEGs. Could be. Makes sense. I guess so. Uh, it's always weird to me, like, you end up with these terms. It's like how we talk about how the icon for saving a file is a floppy disk, even though you don't use floppy disks anymore. Yeah. You end up with, like, these legacy icons and these legacy, like, abbreviations. Well, that's always formats. been the case. I mean, when did people use hourglasses? Probably not <laughs> at the same time as computers, right? But yeah, but you were probably waiting, always waiting. It's like, I don't know. But what else could they have used in place of an hourglass? An hourglass yeah. makes sense. A spinning sense. beach ball? <laughs> But an hourglass, you know, you still see being used occasionally. Like when was the last time you used an hourglass? When I played Boggle. Pictionary? <laughs> Pictionary? <laughs> yeah. Pictionary, yeah. yeah. When I played Boggle. But yeah, I mean, board like, games, that's like the only yeah. market left yeah. for But I mean, but, and, you know, an actual floppy disk, like, you, you never use that, and you will never use that. Unless again. you want to play a tune. That's what they're used for now. Where people oh, the drives? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so confused. <laughs> How's it go again? <laughs> I'm not sure what tune I was... Floppying there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I had to buy. Have you ever owned a computer that had a floppy drive in it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 25. What does that mean? That's a, that's a valid question. I would assume in the last 10 years that floppy drives are gone. You could have gone like 2005. Well, the iMac, I think, was like the first, when that came out, that was like the first computer that shipped without one. Man, the thing I always yep. remember of a Mac is when they just went to USB and they said, F, F everything else. That was like in the late 90s. I think it was also the iMac. Yeah. This is 98, 99. The old, like, like purple and pink ones. Bondi blue. Bondi blue, is that what it was? Yeah. What, the yeah. big CRT iMac? Yeah. The first yeah. one. Yeah. The ones that are, like, multicolored. Yeah. And they first made the iBook. They don't call them the iBook anymore. MacBooks. It, well, it was called the iBook back then. Right. Yeah. And now, now they had they, iBook and PowerBook, and then it was MacBook. Right. Oh, there's the. There's a picture of one. The old oh, one. look at that. My, my roommate in college had one of those in 2000. They, listen, they were really cool when they came out. I they, saw, they had giant handles on the top of yeah, them, Yeah, well, they too. were, I mean, everything else up until that point was, like, some big beige box, and that was the first thing to, like, have a little bit of style to it. I was I, walking past some crappy charity shop, and I saw an Emac. What's it? 
Oh, right. I've never Charity seen one. Show? What is that? It's, I, I figured it, out what he's It's like about. an educational version of an iMac. I think he means like a Goodwill. Yeah. Mm. Like a pawn shop or a Goodwill. It's like an educational version. But Goodwill's a company, isn't it? Because that's what, that's what you meant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a Salvation Army. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the generic term for it? A Goodwill. You're just yeah, saying goodwill. you were walking by a Goodwill. But that's, that's a company. And? Well, what if there's a different one that's not called Goodwill? Yeah, but why would you say charity shop? Saying Goodwill is much more common than a charity shop. Oh, we don't have Goodwill. That's why I said charity shop. A lot of times you say thrift store, too. Thrift store. Okay. Yeah. That's like a catch all. And where the money <laughs> goes after you buy your old buy book or whatever. It's, it's like Macklemore. It's up to you. Macklemore. <laughs> not your business. Thrift shop. Um, <laughs> did Macklemore perform on the VMAs? Because he I've, I've only heard like two things about the yeah, VMAs. Yeah, Macklemore uh, here we go. Per, uh, performed with. On Twitter, people are literally asking us not to talk about the oh, VMAs. Oh, really? about oh, yeah, so let's talk about it. <laughs> let's do it for the VMAs. Why? I think people are sick about the, the VMAs. Yeah, that, it was, I can't believe that it's such big news. The Onion had a great article today calling out CNN for having it be like their headline. Really? Like CNN, like supposedly the self-appointed like most trusted name in news, like their headline is about this, which doesn't matter. <laughs> It's like uh, there's so many more important topics that they could be talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was it was. I, I watched a bit of it because I heard Daft Punk is going to perform, which they did not, and uh, it was pretty pretty terrible. Did okay, now but listen, but listen, I get what, I get what you're saying about that CNN has an obligation to report and all that, and they're a trusted news source. But if they report stuff that no one's going to read about, they're going to go out of business anyway. And if you look at something like Reddit, which is completely crowdsourced essentially. Uh, all, all the links on there today were all VMA stuff. That's mm -hmm. what people wanted to talk about. And even, it was either people mentioning the VMAs or people talking about how we should stop talking about the VMAs, which is still conversation about the VMAs. And, and it's a critique of the VMAs. Well, I mean, that's the internet in a nutshell right there, is people talking about something and other people saying, don't talk about that. That's, yeah. that's the internet. Like, yeah. Can it's, we stop talking about this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the internet and not talk about the internet at the same time. Well, the, it, it's weird to me, like, the weirdest thing about the VMAs is the fact that they're on MTV. Because if I ever see a music video, it's on YouTube. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I saw a music video anywhere but on YouTube. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's weird that, like, I feel like last night MTV held the YouTube video awards <laughs> is basically what they held. Yeah. Did you watch it? Like, what's that? Did you? No. I didn't even know, I didn't even know it took place. Yeah. I had. Why does anyone care? I, apparently Miley Cyrus did some kind of crazy thing. She got a tit out. No, I mean, no. she was twerking. Tw twerking. And you guys, you guys just showed me this video yeah, it's, uh, it's, from Robin Thicke yeah, yeah. about him dancing around with naked chicks on YouTube. Blurred Lines is the name of the song. Yeah. We had to sign into YouTube to be able to watch it because <laughs> yeah. that's like the best protection. It was, was uh, age-gated. Uh, age yeah, so Robin Thicke performed that song actually with Miley Cyrus. And Miley Cyrus was, I don't know, she was trying to ruin her reputation basically. <laughs> she was bouncing around and being really, really lewd with a uh, foam finger. Yeah, it's just like... It's like Mad Libs, basically. It's like, all right, Miley Cyrus and Robin Thicke, Alan Thicke's son, Foam Finger. He looks a lot like Alan Thicke. Yeah, he does. I think he looks like Simon Cowell. No. I, hate, I, hate, I, really, I hate engaging in those conversations because I always think now Twitter's number one function is to tell you when they see somebody who looks like you or, oh, or right. like yeah. who you look like. <laughs> That's like the... No, oh, you know what? Uh, the guys who make Hotline Miami did something at GamesCon where is it games con or games com com C -O -M. C -O -M, right okay oh yeah okay. they did a thing at their booth where they said this and it was a, a list that they added to it was this is a list of our band questions you're not allowed to ask this question at our booth anymore and it was like why is hotline miami 2 so much like hotline miami you know it's go ask ea this question you no know, stuff like that they, and then there was a list of all these questions at their band and i got i wish i wish i could do that for just like some things it's like i've I've, I've answered this so what enough. So right? what would you put up there on that? The, 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 well, listen, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to have to log off Twitter, Twitter for a week because even just mentioning it. I mentioned the thing about honey. That just comes up. That's part of my life now. <laughs> that's still back like, there? Yeah, I'm still back there. Yeah, that's like an airplane flying overhead now. That's just part of the world for me. Is that people are, <laughs> people are going to ask me about the honey thing, about the honey not spoiling. Um, and I, and I, I would, Trust me, of things to be stuck with on the podcast, be, honey is not <laughs> a bad one. I <laughs> like some things that Jack's been stuck with. I saw yeah. a guy wearing a hat today. <laughs> Yeah. We won't mention what it was, but yeah, we saw a guy wearing a hat today. It was like, what the fuck? Anyway. But this, this thing, though, where people, <laughs> people constantly, <laughs> probably three or four times a day, people will contact me to tell me they saw somebody who looks like me. Or they see, like, they, they saw somebody in, like, a movie trailer or somebody on TV who looks like me, and they just send me that. It's fun to be, like, when people tweet at you and they're like, are you in a restaurant in San Antonio right now? It's like, no. Yes. <laughs> So we're going to be at PAX this weekend. We can, just, we can have a whiteboard of banned questions. There you go. Not just a bad like idea. Add, add them at will. 
I want to hear one of your band questions. I mean, the the, it's an evolving the, process. the thing about like people sending me photos. Like, I wish okay, it, uh, okay. I, I've got one. Uh, uh, no, I will not do the truffle shuffle. I know people get asked that. That's going to be a panel question. Now no. I want to see it. I wasn't no, there. I was, was there. backstage. Trust for me, there are plenty panel. of images and video of it. So someone actually yeah. recorded it. It's awesome. Do you own that? that you were dude, awesome. That, that someone, was, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> someone recorded it at 120 frames a second. That's my <laughs> yeah, favorite really? question. It's like <laughs> someone on a cell phone got it in hot, like high speed. <laughs> Jack, that's badass. No, it was one of those things where it's like... Probably a year ago, two years ago, you would not have got up on stage and done that. Yeah, probably not. But it's one of those things where, I mean, all, you know, a year, two years ago, I wouldn't have been standing in front of 5,000 people. Right. Sure. It was like, I mean, we're, I mean, I, I wasn't going to disappoint that many people in oh, one shot. Oh, there we go. Jack likes so. to disappoint people one at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next year, it's going to be your dick. <laughs> but, uh... Oh. Guys, are you smelling your hand? It looks oh, like you're smelling. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was gonna play that by back. the video. They could have waited to, to embarrass me. Hmm. How interesting. How interesting. Hmm. Hmm. So I've discovered something, right? Uh, real fast. I, I've, I've grown my beard again, so I find myself like touching it nonstop. Do you want an opener? That does happen. I would like an opener. He gave me a, you gave me a ride home the other day, and uh, you were just mess. You were driving with one hand, and you were like. <laughs> Yeah. It seems like it was really bugging you. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm getting used to it again. I think I'm going to have to shave it again soon. Nah. Well, just shave the underpart. Just shave it and I'll grow it back. Shave the under underpart? Yeah. I have an awful picture of my driver's license where, I don't know why I had done this, but like the day before I went to get my driver's license, I decided to cut, to shave my facial hair all fucked up. So I kept like all the beard up to here <laughs> and just shaved this and I shaved my mustache. So I'm just missing the facial hair right here what? in front of my face. And I went and took my driver's license photo with it. You, what, you did it for a joke, or you just no? I forgot. I, like I just did that, and then I went and I forgot I had cut my facial hair all fucked up. <laughs> you see, we can't show this before. Yeah, we, we're gonna have to we'll, we'll, the link to we'll scan we'll, the photo. We'll put a picture. <laughs> the Amish. That's good. Oh my god, Gus. <laughs> yeah, I've the the last time I completely you shaved. You just got back from the <laughs> 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 How'd you get that? How the fuck did they have? That? Wow. <laughs> Gus, you look like you just amazing. you just got back from like a civil war <laughs> like a, a civil war reenactment. I oh would not God. know what race you are. Did it just say question mark? No, like, like, the they hand it to you, like they hand you the picture like on a on a on a like a piece of paper they print it out like black and white, they hand it to you, and I looked at it and I was like, no, no, this is some this is some Asian dude. I was like, Where's mine? They're like, no, that's you, sir. I was like, oh my god, that is me. <laughs> This is some Asian dude. Like, I had no idea. Didn't, I didn't, didn't look like me at all to me. Uh, did when you got your UT student ID, was the mullet cam still that? going on? Oh yeah, where? Yeah. No, I well, went to keyboard. On the keyboard. Uh, when they would take photos for our student IDs, yeah. um, they had them set up so that you can explain. Yeah, the, the way it was up. framed up was like you're in front of a blue wall, but they had a flash like right here. And the way it would hit you is like your ears would leave a shadow <laughs> right below your ears. So it looked like everyone at UT had a mullet because it had this nice little <laughs> black outline like right behind your ears. And like every like every single photo of people without long hair, that's what it looked that like. That is funny. Is there a compilation of a bunch of those? Anyway? I don't know. I, I think I might still have my student ID if I can find it. But Remember this, guys? This is like one of the oldest videos oh, God. on the internet. Yeah. What are these guys? They were called uh, Teenagers from Mars. Here we go. That's, that's not what they're called, were they? I don't remember, but driver uh, license. Uh, whatever state this happened in, they had to reform their rules as far as uh, driver's license requirements and the rules for taking pictures, because specifically because of this Here, video of these guys. Check this video out, Brandon. It's Day by Day Productions. This video is like probably six years old. These guys would like bet each other who could have the worst driver's license photo. Oh no! That would allow <laughs> that. <they, they> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I want to say that they're from, like, West Virginia. Virginia, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And so they couldn't take cameras into the DMV, so they would wait outside. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, this guy's got a... Uh, How uh, did he pull uh, that off? Unbelievably racist Asian... There's tons of... <laughs> oh, there's not tons of, but there's, there's probably five or six in that video. That yeah. it just escalates and gets worse and worse. One guy paints himself worse. orange. <laughs> To do it, he completely paints himself orange and goes into the DMV. But I always wanted to go to, uh, I always wanted to go to get my driver's license photo and walk in. And when I first walk up to the first person I see, just walk in <laughs> cross-eyed and just spend the entire afternoon there, like completely cross-eyed. And even when I take the test, once you put your eyes in there, you can uncross them. Yeah. But if you're cross-eyed the entire time, nobody's gonna say anything to you. They won't let you cross your eyes for the photo. But if you can maintain it for like oh, 20 man, minutes, that would hurt. Then you sit. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I would get a giant headache from that. If you want, if you want to cut back, here's yeah, the, the, the guy. Yeah, this is the guy who's all orange. 
and he got a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got a driver's license photo completely orange. Anyway, ch- check it out. It's called Driver's License Prank. It's a... Uh, it's uh, by Day by Day Productions. How many views does that have? It, oh, it's probably not the original upload, right? Uh, yeah. Here, I'll look it up. What's that? Scroll down. Yeah, one, 1 million, million. But it was uploaded when? We saw this site before YouTube. I think we yeah, saw this video. 2006. 2006. Yeah, well, I think we saw this. God, maybe even before we started doing Rooster Teeth stuff. Uh huh. No. Uh, Teenage, teenagers, teenagers from Uranus. Teenagers from Uranus. Yeah. So I'm sure you can find that. But uh, it's Day by Day Productions that did that. I think Snake Tar is the name of the uh, YouTube account. <laughs> Man. But yeah, really no, funny stuff. I mean, we just laughed our asses off watching that video. There's no way you can get away with anything like that in text. I feel like even if you even remotely begin to try to make a photo, even if you like try to smile your driver's license photo here in Texas, they make you retake yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They do smile. not let you smile at passport checkpoints, mm-hmm. uh, at uh, uh, customs checkpoints. They won't let you smile. What, you can't smile at the people? No, like they take a photo of you as you're entering the checkpoint. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was specifically in the UK. Just to make sure you're the same person when you walked in than when you got on the plane. Yeah, Jeff and I landed in, what's, it's not, it's Gatwick. Yeah. So we landed there and we we're going to transfer to go to Edmonton in Scotland. Edinburgh. Edinburgh, Edinburgh. not Edmonton. Edmonton. That's, in, that's in Canada. Canada. Um, we're going to Edinburgh and we had a transfer there and it was like the day after they had that gel scare. You remember that where the guys were going to combine gels on the plane. Is that why oh, we can't yeah. have liquids anymore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why we can't have liquids anymore. It had to be in a clear container. Mm-hmm. Always one guy ruins it for everyone. <laughs> Freaking shoe bomber. Do you bomber. find that procedure when you're innocent is quite nice? Like, no. You, no. No. That's you, a big pain dude, in the ass. I, I will say Australian airports, are. The, it was the most comfortable, easiest thing I've ever been in my life. Keep no, all your clothes it's on. It's so frustrating, because, but because of that, it's more of a pain in the ass when you land in the US. Like yeah. when I came back and I had to change planes in LA, it's like, oh, well, you didn't, you know, in security in Australia, you don't take your shoes off. So now you have to go through security again in the U.S. and you have to take your shoes off. Like, yeah. I have to go through the fucking line again. Yeah, and after you've landed already, it's like, all right, you're already here, but we're still going to run you through it. Like, you're leaving the airport, but we're still going to run you through I it. I do like being proved innocent, though. <laughs> like, if they search my bag and there's nothing and they give my bag back, it's like, oh, thanks. It's like, yeah, you're welcome. Oh, please. Are, like, you, are you indignant that they're... <laughs> it's just a good feeling. I like it when... I don't know. Like, this is what I want to do, right? I want to go into a store and buy a ton of stuff, like just fill a shopping cart full of stuff that you would use to clean up a body. Like <laughs> detergent for carpet, right? like scrubbing sure. brushes and all this stuff. And rubber just gloves. Rubber stuff gloves. you would use to clean an apartment. <laughs> now I'm gonna get some detergent and some gloves. <laughs> You're not gonna know anything. Now, what if he throws a hacksaw in the mix? Yeah, yeah. Like just <laughs> real, like uh, stuff that all together would look really yeah, suspicious. Yeah, like, like rope too, like rope and zip ties and yeah, stuff. I'd, yeah, I'd wanna see if trash anyone, bags. Yeah, yeah. I'd wanna see if anyone said anything. Dude, uh, when I was flying, I was in, I think, Melbourne, coming back to Sydney, and uh, I was walking through security, and they, like, randomly every now and then, they'll, like, pull someone, and, like, they'll scan your, they'll test your bag with whatever, like, they'll run yeah. the little wand over it. The guy did that, put it in, and all of a sudden, an alarm went off in the machine. He's like, huh, that's weird. It tested, it tested positive for explosives. Let me do it again. Well, I was like, okay. And the guy's, like, just chatting away with me. All right, yeah, you having fun? Or what part of America are you from? <laughs> And he's like, oh, okay, it's fine. Go on. And it was like so nonchalant about it. It's like uh, my bag just like it was, you know, tested positive. Yeah, he's like, yeah, like, he's calling the dogs and all, like, all the fucking SWAT team. They're all like closing in on he you. Put, he's like, he's like, he's like ah, probably a mistake. Don't worry. And I was like, he's got like that single bead of sweat <laughs> coming yeah. down his face. Yeah, I look so intimidating that way. But it, it, was, it was like, man, and they just like, all right, it was so much easier and so less stressful and like. In America, it's like, all right, take your shoes off. Like, strip down to whatever, you know, just a T-shirt and, and pants. All right, now take, you know, now put, like, tear everything out of your bag, put on the scanner, and I get through. Oh, by the way, you're overbooked on your flight. You're, you're not going to be able to get to your flight. It's, like, it's nothing but stress at airports. And they get somewhere like that, it's like, oh, this is easy. I think, like, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but I swear to God, no one believes me when this happened. One time I was flying to Adelaide, Melbourne to Adelaide. I'm, t- I'm sorry, I was going back to Melbourne. It was Adelaide to Melbourne. Okay. I went to the security checkpoint in Adelaide. There was no one manning the fucking <laughs> checkpoint. It was empty. There was no one even in line. It was just me by myself. And I was like, I thought it was like a reality show prank. It was no one there. Are I you like, sure you put my stuff through the x-ray. And I walked through the, the, the <laughs> middle of the check. I was like... Are you sure it wasn't no closed? And you, there were just, was, no, you weren't there just shoving your bag through. It was on because the belt was going in and everything. <laughs> oh, like the time we wandered into a closed part of the Japanese airport. <laughs> Gavin and I... And we have to fill out, the, when you land in a country, they give you a little card that you have to fill out. It's, an, it's like, a, like a disembark <laughs> card or right. whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. And you have to fill it out with all your information. You turn it in. It's like step. Every customs has it. But we didn't have a pen to do it. And so we ended up wandering into this closed part of the Japanese airport, and it was dark. And it's I was like, like a left was, dead level. 
<laughs> right? It looked like it left for the level, it did. Because when, when there's no lights in the distance and you've only got the lights on above your head, yeah, yeah. it kind of fades to black. So the point, you can't actually see anything in the distance and it gets darker and it's like, this is eerie. <laughs> and he leant over a barrier and picked up a pen. I, yeah, well, it had to, like, I found the thing, it had the chain yeah, yeah. with the pen attached to it and I grabbed it and I started trying to write with it and I couldn't write with it. And I looked at it and the thing on the end of the chain wasn't a pen, it was a thermometer. We were in the disease quarantine oh. area. <laughs> I, and I, I saw him like, lean over the I was like this, walking through the airport. Yeah. I, 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 saw, oh, I was behind him. I saw him lean over and just go, and he was just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so was like, he went straight to the bathroom. I was like, what is it? <laughs> we actually did a video. I think that's been on, on RT Life. Because it was one of the RT Lives we did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that scared the hell out I of me. I filmed it because I was wetting myself with laughter. But did you get to experience in... Uh, uh, Australia when we went this last time, Gus. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's a, I mean, this is my passport, and right here there's a little gold square right there. Yeah, the RFID symbol. It's RF, They call it a smart passport, but it's a RFID chip that's in this thing. Right. And uh, dude, customs in Australia, it was like I didn't have to talk to anybody. I just scanned my passport, then stood in front of a machine. It took my picture and said thank you, and that was it. Mm. That was the entirety of customs. That's yeah, how I get back through to England. Is I go through a machine. I just slide it in, and the doors go like. Beep. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things that apparently it matches your face with your passport photo. So huh. sometimes you can have issues with it. Ashley so. ran into a problem because I don't know if you know this or not. Ashley wears like her heels are like this big. She wears like platform shoes. And it judged her as being too tall based on her <laughs> picture for what her passport How said. can you tell That's how funny. tall someone is from that picture? It, it's like a set of three cameras and it detects where you are and it determines your height. But how does it know that. her height? Oh, it's, it's like this the is passport. on the passport, maybe. I don't know. Your height is on your passport. I, I don't so. know. I don't know. But that's what they that's what the person said why she got rejected. Ah. The, her height my, my passport is so old, it doesn't have the RFID. Yeah. And also I look totally different. Like the picture I have in my passport is when I used to shave my head and I have no facial hair. When I was coming back into the US, the customs agent did a double take on me. He was like, <laughs> he looks at me in the the, the passport is like I was like, it's an old picture. <laughs> it's gonna expire soon. He's like, Yeah, you look nothing like this anymore. Nice. How long have you had it? Like nine years. Nine years, yeah. It's or yeah, so more than nine years one. now. Man, but I, I I felt the same way you did. I, I actually made a post about that when I got back to the U.S. I said after two weeks away and going through customs and because we went over to New Zealand as well. Yeah. Uh, after going through customs in all those different countries, after arriving back in the U.S., it is an unfortunate feeling. I said it doesn't even feel like coming home. It feels like I'm returning to custody. You know, because yeah. it's like you land and they're like, "What are you doing? Stay behind the line." Like as soon as I showed up, they were like barking orders at me. Yeah. You know, and tell me, "Go here, go here. You're doing this wrong." And I'm well, like, in, in LAX. Like, yeah, in LAX, yeah. Yeah, that but, sucked. Land yeah, the, two of the worst terminals are LAX and uh, JFK. Mm -hmm. Welcome well, to our country. Yeah, yeah. It, looks, yeah. it looks like garbage, honestly. I'll, Although I'll, in the UK, they did point a machine gun at me. Jesus. They'll yeah. do that, yeah. It was right, <laughs> after, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was right after that gel scare, and I had, because we were going to do a presentation about machinima, I had my laptop and I had a production laptop with me, which is that enormous, remember that Black Widow laptop? Yeah, I, kinda, was, I forgot the name of it. Yeah, yeah it was enormous, and... Uh, I was, I said, they said, you can only have one carry-on. And I said to the guard, I go, well, these are both laptops. Well, what should I do? And he, without saying a word with his gun, he pointed at the laptop and then pointed at the trash. Jesus. And that was it. It was like, okay. So I had to like condense down to one laptop bag and throw a whole laptop bag away. There's yeah. nothing I could do because my check bags had transferred through. So I didn't even have access to that stuff. That's terrifying. Yeah. I was just fucked. Man, we're fl so we're flying into Seattle for PAX, and mm -hmm. I remember last time we flew into Seattle, my, my luggage broke for one thing, but they moved the, the uh, rental car check-in. Remember I that? I fucking hate that the rental God, car check-in's been moved. What do you mean? At SeaTac, now you have to go off-site for all the yeah, rental cars. Yeah, you have to take a bus to go to the rental car Oh, you thing. poor babies. This is it sucks. I, well, I'll be, I'm, I'm coming in late, though, so I'm going to end up taking the train in, which is nice. Mm -hmm. When do you get there? Uh, Thursday night. Or like uh, thir Thursday evening. Is that late? That's when I'm getting there. Well, I think... Well, Other people get in early to settle. Yeah. Uh, we make it look good for you guys. Yeah. So, so, Gavin, you raise a good point. I don't know why this should not know your height. I don't know how they would know your height. Maybe you have they, to put that on when you apply and they didn't print it, but they know it. Right. Maybe. It, it could be embedded in the RFID information. Yeah. It could be, and that would be Maybe part it's of the your thing. DNA in there. <laughs> it tells yeah. you how tall you should be. But yeah. I'm pretty sure when you fill out the form, it asks for your height. Yeah. Did you I, hear the downside to these RFID chips, the, the test that somebody ran? I think so, but go ahead. Which is uh, that apparently when, it, when it's opened a little bit, that's how you can like detect the RFID signal. And so, since it contains a lot of information, including nationality, somebody showed how these are dangerous because they made a bomb that only goes off when an American walks by. But, like, what? theoretically, you could then... An American carrying their passport. An well, yeah. An American. open passport. No, or just, you know... Why is that funny? Well, it's like, of course, because it started off a conversation about the passport. So, 
I don't broadcast an RFID signal as an American. I would have to have my passport. Well, I don't know why you're... <laughs> why are you laughing? You're, why are you laughing? Like, like you're clarifying what I'm saying. You know, it's like... If they want to blow up an American, just go and do it. They're everywhere. Well, no, it's automated, though. It's what it is. They set up a station, and when, uh, somebody, when an American passport went by... Just blow up a Portuguese dude regard- a Like, say, a Portuguese person. <laughs> a Portuguese person had the American passport. They could set off a bomb based on the passport when it was nearby. That seems, that seems like a going out a, a lot out of the way to just yeah, make sure you hit an American. That's Because you, you're going to blow up that technology along with the bomb. Like, it's like... It's like, okay. Right, that's what I'm get... worried about with bombs. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to blow up this bomb. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm going to spend so, so, so much. But it's so like, much time working on three bombs for the price of this little chip here. So, like, oh, we just, you know, we'll take a crapshoot and make sure we'll, we'll probably get one. This is really fucking morbid conversation we're having right yeah, now. Yeah, we're not talking about people's bodies and limbs being ripped off. I think oh. it was actually Black Hat. It was at a Black Hat thing where it's a hacker oh, okay. convention. Where yeah, I think there's a proof of concept video you can see online also. Yeah, yeah I'm, looking, I, I'm looking at an article on I, Ziff Davis now. I had a friend of mine who worked at a Black Hat convention. and uh, Just I, throw out your phone. Exactly. Like, it, she literally left her phone back home. She's yeah. like, not taking it away. You and I went to Vegas once inadvertently at the same time as DEF CON, I think. Which is another hacker secu- security convention. Yeah, 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 we realized it and both of us were just like, oh. Phone's off. <laughs> they have a wall there during the convention. Wall where, of shame. Yeah, the wall of shame. When they hack people, they get all their information and just put it up on the wall. Like people who are just walking by and they pack their phones or get them on Wi-Fi or something like did that. You see, did you see that Facebook hack that just happened? No. Where a guy hacked Mark Zuckerberg's wall? <laughs> well, like hacked it like kind of hacked it not a, a malicious way but you could post on other people's walls whether or not you're friends with them or whether or not they have it turned off or not. Yeah. So it's not like he was pulling information down but he was like this guy had sent in a bug report and he was like this is broken you need to fix this this is bad you know anyone can post on anyone's wall and they just ignored him ignored him ignored him so he made a YouTube video and showed him hacking into Zuckerberg's account or not his account but his wall and showed exactly how he did it and how anyone can do it wow and so and then they, they basically they blocked his account banned him Realized that oh this guy did submit a report and they whitelisted him and they let him through and I guess now he's writing bug reports for well, that was nice Facebook. of them to do that because they yeah. weren't obligated to do yeah. that but it's like Absolutely. when someone calls it out, it's like, okay, you know, you have an issue, and like, here's the issue. I'm showing you what's wrong with it. You should fix this, and then no one does it. It's like, what can you do about that? So. Yeah. I mean, it's also how many bug reports do they get? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm so. sure it's a lot of stuff to, to sift. They through. say that the next iPhone is going to have a fingerprint button, fingerprint scanner. Yeah. I'm the cool iPhone with that. 5s. I think it's cool. Also, there's a gold version of it. Champagne. Champagne. The, that announcement, I think they said, is September 10th. So not. Yeah. So, so two it, weeks from. Tomorrow? And it goes on sale on the 21st. Really? Yeah. That information's already out there? People are oh, people leaf. are worried about that. Have you heard all the hubbub about that the, they're afraid that it'll get your your fingerprint and then the NSA will essentially have access to it? They already have your fingerprint. That's, yeah. that's the thing. Is like At least in Texas, you have to give your thumbprints to get a driver's license. So unfortunately for me, I have to admit that ship has already sailed. Yeah. I don't understand that. Why do they need your thumbprint to give you a driver's license? They don't. I've never understood they that. Don't no. need you it. Need they don't need thumbs just, to drive. They started doing it uh, about 10 years ago. <laughs> That's a new thing. Yeah, I just don't understand. That's cool. How I, that started. I've been arrested. Body so identification. My, my <laughs> so do you have mugshots? Yeah, yeah, I've got a mugshot somewhere. <laughs> Wait, like, you get that picture? Dental record? No, I didn't. Be better. Dude, I wonder. If, but I guess. <laughs> I wonder if someone could gross. find. I wonder if someone could find my mugshot. It's bound to have one. Williamson County. Oh, sure. You're yeah, the only person. Uh, we know somebody who got arrested. Gus drove to a different county to get their mugshot. But I mean, I wonder if it's available county. online or something. Like, I'm sure I could call them. I don't them, think you can do it online. I think you have to go. Really? Yeah. But they have like that magazine, which is like the. The Austin's Most Wanted or whatever? I think that magazine went under. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, man. I Busted. Th- I think Busted, that's what it was. Yeah, it was like a shaming magazine where they would post all the mug shots for the week. Yeah. And put it on, like, the, it was for sale at the counters of convenience stores. And they had, like, hottest mug shots. Hottest mug shots. <laughs> goofiest mug yeah. shot. All that stuff. I, I, to me, I, 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 I think that's horrible. I really do. Because well, they, they might have do it for the pedophiles, though, still, right? The, no, no, but see, that's the thing. A mug shot <coughs> has become... A thing that indicates guilt. Like, this is a yeah. criminal. Because yeah, yeah. only criminals have mugshots, right? But people can get arrested and not be convicted of something. Like Jack. Like me. Like, like Jack wasn't convicted for what he did wrong. I like did he, nothing wrong. <laughs> God damn it. He got off scot free. No, but it's uh, it's one of those things. So if you see someone's mugshot next to a headline saying they're accused of this, you immediately think that that person is guilty. Yeah. I like mugshots because it reminds you that people are human. <laughs> like you see a celebrity mugshot, it's like, yeah, good. The law still applies. <laughs> good? Good? Yeah. You asshole. Why? It's not good. It's not good to get a mug shot. It's never good. Someone just reminds like, people like, who think they're above the law that they're not. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> what do you think? I don't even know. So if... Who thinks they're above the law? A lot of celebrities. Really? Yeah. Hmm. 
I don't know. Uh, currently, four states require fingerprints for driver's license. California, Colorado, Georgia, and Texas hmm. require finger or thumbprints as part of driver's licensing process. Colorado does. Mm -hmm. I thought Colorado is a fairly liberal state. California Hawaii too. does not, but the city yeah. and county of Honolulu do. You know, there's a lot of states, I think, in the U.S. that <clears throat> they seem, because of the big cities there, they seem more liberal, but then the outlying areas are actually very conservative states. Seattle's like one of the states like that. Washington is actually a fairly conservative state, but Seattle's a very liberal city. You know, yeah. we live in a very liberal city in a very conservative state. Yeah. Apparently, because women can walk around topless on 6th Street and we can do yeah. videos with them. That was interesting for the RT recap. Did you see that? Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, on Friday morning, I saw Brandon walking into the office and he looked like shit. Yeah, he, he looked like, wrecked in that video. Yeah, he, he, he looked awful. I was like, what, what happened? He's, we were filming the recap downtown last night and I got really drunk. I'm super hungover. It's like, okay, and then I saw the recap over the week. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you were fucking wrecked. That's pretty cool. Like, I saw Buffalo Billiards in there. It's like, we have, we're friends with those guys, and it's cool to see them, like, allow them to shoot in those areas. So, yeah, that's very nice. But, yeah. But, yeah, like, the... It's... Yeah, I always thought it would be weird to try to shoot anything in a bar. Yeah. Like, I didn't think bars would be okay with that. Yeah. I always think, like, bars and casinos. Like, casinos apparently are a nightmare to shoot in. Well, they've got all the cameras already. Just Hasn't yeah. the ship sailed, though, on... on, on... On cameras anywhere though, because everyone literally has a camera at all points in time. He's got yeah. Google Glass. You could film a recap wherever you want. <laughs> Just walk around. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those. I don't, I don't know. Something, something about like you know walking around with a light and a giant camera and a microphone. It is that's a little bit different. So yeah, definitely no, attracts different. a different kind of crowd. Also, when you're downtown, I can only imagine what it was like to shoot down there. It's a nightmare. So. <laughs> night. We used to shoot stuff down there in college. And the drunks are just, yeah, oh, yeah, they come like flies to that light, that like moths, you know. <laughs> I want to be on the TV. When, when, when our office was downtown, uh, we had to deal with them constantly. Constantly. Because oh. our parking garage, from the, the trek from our office to the parking garage, went through 6th Street. Yeah. And we had to take an elevator up, and it was a parking garage where if you left late enough on a Friday or Saturday night, which was for us was pretty frequently mm -hmm. during production, that you were going up in the elevator with drunks. That place smelled like piss the yeah. entire time. Well. Yeah. Didn't you get made fun of for having a backpack once? <laughs> you know, the girl, drunk girls, I was in the elevator with them, they go, why are you carrying your book bag? <laughs> <laughs> I had my, uh, had my laptop with me. And I was like, oh, I just got off work. Nice. And they were like, oh, what do you do? I said, well, work in, like, you know, entertainment, film production. Like, oh, what? This is a website. And they're like, ah, <laughs> 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 fell off fast. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard enough already to describe it to sober people, much less uh, drunk people downtown on Sixth Street. When you when you're filling, again, going back to the airport stuff, and like uh, when you're when you're flying into a country, what do you put as your occupation? Filmmaker. Filmmaker. Yeah, I put filmmaker as well, just because mm. it's the easiest. It, it is, but it becomes a problem <clears throat> when you're staying in a country for like, like when you're when we're, you're in Australia. We, I always like to go over to New Zealand because it's right there, you know. Uh, so I go over for like two days, and when you do something like that. Like when Gavin and I stopped in Japan for a day and a half, that can sometimes be the length of time that you work on a film project. So if it's a film country, like New Zealand is a very big film country, they become very skeptical of short trips. Uh. Or like when we go up to even to Canada for a couple days, go like go to Vancouver for uh, RVB Can West uh, fan event. Vancouver's a big film destination. And if you're showing up for three days, they're like, why are you only come to Canada for three days? Convention. The answer is because it's Canada. <laughs> yeah, I got... That was a, the most I got a? interrogated on our trip was New Zealand. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And they're like, why are you only here for two days? It's like, I don't know. Just, yeah. <laughs> why not? Why Gus, not? I have a question from Twitter. <clears throat> Hobbit2513 wants to know who is going to PAX Prime. Hobbit2513? All of us. I will answer that question as soon as I'm done reading this. All right, right that's a tease. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Hulu+. Plus. I'm sure you've tried Hulu.com, but I want to tell you about Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere. Stream it on your TV or on the go with your smartphone or tablet. Why stand in line or ride a train and just stare at your feet when you could be watching your favorite shows on Hulu Plus? Hulu Plus is a great way to binge watch your favorite shows. It's got tons of episodes from great comedies like SNL, Community, Modern Family, South Park, Red vs. Blue, and thousands of other shows. Hulu Plus is only $7.99 a month. That's $7.99 for all the shows and movies you can watch. <laughs> Catch up on current shows, binge on an old favorite, or catch a great movie. You can do it all on Hulu Plus. And right now you can try it for two weeks for free when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. So please go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth for an extended free trial, and they'll know that we sent you. Binge watching. You can watch all of it. It's an official thing now, man. Wow. Yep. It's, it's nice. a great way to watch TV shows that you've missed. Yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. So what's, what's, uh, 
uh, what's something we could binge watch on Hulu Plus? Uh, you know, I've got a list of stuff here. What was the cliffhanger? But right now, I've I already forgot the cliffhanger. <laughs> what were we going to talk about? You teased something. I went back and I've been, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> I've been going back and watching all episodes of Drunk History on uh, Hulu Plus. Oh, really? Is that they have a TV show on Comedy Central. Yeah, Comedy now. Central. Uh, so I've been trying to catch up on that. Uh, I just watched some of that. Oh, that Zoe Dashnell <laughs> show is on there. Uh, New Girl. You like that, don't you? I've never watched it. She's really? You're pretty, a huge fan. I like her. She's but pretty I, I, I like I, her I, I watched half the first, like the pilot, and I didn't like you it. You can binge so. watch The Office, Community, Parks and Rec. Love Community. Modern Family. If I recommend one Modern show on there, I'm looking at Modern Family, Glee, Community. I was never, I've never been a big Community fan. It I took know me you a like long it. time to get into Community. Community's funny. Like the, the, the characters in that show are really well done. And uh, it kind of dipped off the end of last season, but they actually, the showrunner is now back on the show, and they're shooting the new season of it. Really? So, I didn't yeah. know he was back. Dan Harmon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's um, back. Yeah, he, season, season one I wasn't a fan of, but then season two I felt like they retooled some things, and it, it got yeah. pretty solid. It was a little bit more serious the first season, and then they kind of like just got really goofy with it, and then at that point it became really funny. Very similar to like Parks and Rec, where it's like the first season they were trying to figure out exactly yeah. what it is they're doing. Yeah. And then, uh, then they, they That's a show I binge Number watched, one actually. clip right now on Hulu Plus that I'm looking at is, is Miley Cyrus. NBC Today Show. <laughs> so, like, you tell people not to talk about it, but people are interested in this. They're and looking it up. The VMAs are always a wreck, you know? People do the same thing. Like, Ben Affleck was just cast as Batman. It's Batman. And people are freaked the fuck out about that. Batman. Like, completely freaked out. Um, and I just made a point on Twitter, which I said, you know, when they, uh, when they cast Michael Keaton as Batman, and then again when they cast Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger as Joker, yeah. uh, there was a big uproar about those, too. Keaton especially. They got, like, death threats. About like pissing really? all over the image of uh, Batman. This is way back for the original Tim Burton movie, and people thought Keaton was the best Batman for the longest time. And then, yeah, you get Val Kilmer and George Clooney in there. It's like, oh yeah. god. Up until Christian Bale finally, yeah, know, took his turn. Kind of nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's like I, I think Ben Affleck's in a pretty good place right now. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised that he did it after like he took off after Goodwill Hunting. He did all the big blockbuster movies like Armageddon and all that. And Matt Damon went the more like artistic route. And then Ben Affleck kind of fell off the map for a little while. And uh, Matt Damon had a great well, Matt career. Matt Damon did Bourne Identity. That's, that was yeah. huge. But that was a little yeah. bit further down the road. Oh, it was? Like, he did, like, uh, the talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, and yeah. Movies like that. The Jude Law movie. For a while. I think, the, I think Bourne Identity was pretty far into the mix for Bourne him. Bourne Identity is pretty old at this point. Talented is it? Mr. Ripley maybe after it. I think Bourne Identity is early, early 2000s. I think it's almost 10 years old at this point. I but, just rewatched it yesterday. <clears throat> somebody, on, somebody on Twitter found your arrest record, so. Oh, really? But he, the, the link he sent was, like, in you know, one of those dynamically generated websites. So uh, when I look at it, it just takes me back to the search page. I, I okay. ask him to please send me a screenshot. So. Okay, yeah, so yeah. To answer Hobbit 2513, uh, people going to PAX Prime. PAX Prime. Ray, Barbara, Jack, Gus, Bernie, Monty, Gavin. No, not Brandon. <laughs> oh, what about Alan? Don't forget Alan. Oh, yeah. Alan. Everybody, everybody wants to hang out with Alan. Alan, Alan, Alan and Chris. Chris Martin, too. <laughs> Martin and I are going to be there. So you, actually, you should see them. Yeah, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm leaving for Las Vegas tomorrow night to go to the GameStop Expo. So I'll be there on Wednesday. They, so. they, they gave, GameStop gave all the managers there at the Expo, or not GameStop, Sony gave all the managers at the GameStop Expo a PlayStation 4 at seven games. Yeah, that's. How many managers are there? That's that's smart. That's a smart, smart move. I think every manager and part. assistant manager for every GameStop go. Wow. Why? Yeah. You know smart? what? It's not. Because, it's not really that big of an investment, honestly. No, no. It's smart because now six thousand units. You want like think of how many people buy yeah. games from GameStop. You walk in, boom! Already, you've got two people working at that store that have a PS4, and they got one for free, so they're going to be Plus, feeling good about something. They, they know the, the game. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, I played that game. It's really good." Or yeah. They also said but, there's going to be a white Xbox One, but only for Microsoft employees. That's kind of cool. A white, you know, they'll have a white Xbox One in a couple of years. Yeah, like it looks, they, they, it looked cool. Yeah, so Sony is like they're trying to. Well, they're not trying to save face, but did you hear what they did with Grand Theft Auto? I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, GameStop. I thought they gave all the GameStop managers a free copy of Grand, <laughs> no. Grand Theft Auto Five. No, no. So Sony, um, they had on their pre-order download, or they they have a pre-order store for uh, right. Grand Theft Auto Five, and somehow the link got out there, and so people downloaded the game early and are now spoiling the game. It wasn't game. the whole game, was it? I thought it was just like I think some my, source files that could be decrypted. Maybe that's what it was. But they like I know they've released like some plot points, some of the music in the game, like I think the main theme of the game and a few other things. So wow. I like that. But Sony, Sony came out and said, well, we fucked up. We're sorry about that. Our bad. And so they at least they did own up to it. It's I like, like that that Michael McDonald song that we've been singing over and over <laughs> yeah. again in GTA. What a fool believes. In, yeah. What a fool GTA believes 5. is in GTA oh, it's 5. Like, it's in GTA 5? Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, this? So that's that's cool, but anyway, it's yeah, it's uh, I think Sony, you know, hitting the GameStop managers is Wait, that's smart. When does that come out? September seventeenth. Yes. 
So Matt Damon, Three weeks from Matt Damon, tomorrow. by the way, went from Goodwill Hunting to Saving Private Ryan. Matt Damon. Yeah, Rounders. Small movies like Saving Private Ryan. Rounders. Talented Miss. He had a small part. Round, in Rounders Private was a great movie. A tiny movie. part. Rounders came main, out. He was the title. Yeah, yeah but, but he it, wasn't in the movie until the like. They were well, looking for him the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he comes at the very end. No, Rounders, Rounders is a great movie, but it came out about well, I would say five to ten years too <laughs> early. <laughs> That's like saying Titanic. The ship was the lead character. In the movie <laughs> it's, the it's on the posters. <laughs> well, he, technically, the ship is in every shot. That it is, is true. technically in every shot. Except for some time. of the later ones. <laughs> Piece of the ship. Spoiler. The ship fucking sinks. Everybody dies. Uh, Talented Miss Ripley. Titan A.E. That was a good movie. Titan A.E. That, that was actually a pretty Didn't, good movie. That sunk an entire animation studio, didn't it? Yeah. DreamWorks? The, um, was that DreamWorks? I thought that was a Bluth one. That was yeah. a huge flop. It was a huge flop. Uh, it did sink an animation. Studio. I know that Final Fantasy sunk Square Pictures. You know when that came mm-hmm. out. Uh, Legend of Bagger Vance, Finding Forrester, All the Pretty Horses, and then Ocean's Eleven. So he went a big run before. Yeah. He did one of those big blockbuster movies. Big run movies. of crap. He was huge in Ocean's Eleven. What do you mean huge? Well, I mean I thought like that was a huge role for him. Oh, I, I thought so too. And then there was even like five more movies before that before he did Born Identity. So yeah. it was. Well, it was well, a big, well he was wow. born. What? Well, yeah, it was Born Identity. Uh, Born Identity was... What website are you on, Bernie? Uh, I'm on Jack's <laughs> favorite website, uh, imdb.com. Uh, 2002 was Born Identity. Wow, 11 years ago. Jeez. And uh, it, it they, was, they made about four Born movies now? Clive Owen was in that. Like that. It was five oh, yeah, years after he made Good Will Hunting, so... Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be off. I'm on vacation when GTA 5 comes out. I just realized. Why are you on yeah. vacation? Because I, I am. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You know, you know, Matt Damon was actually in a Matt movie Damon. with Meg Ryan. It was a war movie. Oh, Courage Under Fire. Courage Under Fire. And he played an HIV positive soldier. It's just funny because I asked, what do you guys want to talk about today? And you want to talk about HIV. So here you go. There you go. There's he, a connection. There's a connection. He played an HIV positive soldier and he lost a tremendous yeah. amount of weight for a bit part. Because it was told like in flashbacks. She was being posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, right. I believe. Right? Yeah, or the Silver like Star it. or something. Was like some, that was filmed here not in Texas too. Oh, right? Yeah, it was actually right. It was it like was. San Antonio or something. But uh, he, he, I think he permanently damaged like his liver or his pancreas or something by losing so much weight. Have you seen the? Have you seen the? Oh, yeah, there it is. Wow. Holy There's, crap. So that's the, um, that the one on the right is the, uh, the not Soderbergh movie or maybe it's a Soderbergh movie, where he plays the guy who's like a whistleblower, and uh, it's just a really goofy movie. I but. thought he was really good in uh, Team America, <laughs> the informant. That's the informant. Is, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Do, do you know the story behind the Team America thing? No. So the Team America, like, you know, they went through and they found a bunch of, you know, liberal actors and they, they made their characters that, you know, they're, they're marionettes. And they modeled them after real people. So it was like there's George Clooney, Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins. And they got the Matt Damon one. And they said he just looked wrong. But they thought, they thought it was just so funny they just left it in anyway. So all he says is his own name. He says Matt Damon over <laughs> and over again. So, yeah, those guys. Dude, what, what, what movie all? was it? They, the, the, supposedly they got... A script for a blockbuster movie early before the movie had come out so their initial plan was to shot for shot make that movie <laughs> using puppets and release before the actual movie came out really i don't know about that That's... the day after tomorrow was that it oh, <laughs> That's man. what i'm being told like they got this they just got script they just wanted to make the entire movie and then release it before that would be awesome that can i retweet this crap. this thing that you were arrested for but then didn't do yeah sure you sure yeah i'm fine with it. i mean right. i, I was i was not convicted and like that I, we know <laughs> Probably. No, it, clearly, it's, no. It's, it's on the. We have a record of it. You know what? You, you got a mugshot, so good. <laughs> yeah, clearly, Fucking, you're not above the law. Yeah, I'm not I gotta above the give law. A, I get, you're in a mugshot in a tuxedo, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm wearing a tuxedo shirt. I think I might still have my my buttons you, on uh, too. Did you own the picture, or were you just kind of sad looking? Uh, I don't like, know. I, I may have done my like kind of goofy face on my one eyebrow <laughs> up thing. Can I, let me tell the story behind this. It, so by you, the way, I gotta give credit to user Evan Barrera. Evan Barrera, for good that. job. And, and Brandon, if you want to post it, I just so if you it. So the story behind this is. So my sister got married, and I got hammered that night. But I gave my keys to a friend. I'm like, I'm not driving. You take care of things. And he's like, all right, fine. And so I just got hammered. And I was like, all right. What? But I did the right thing by not driving. Yeah. So he drove my car around the rest of the night. We get back to my brother-in-law's, my new brother-in-law's place, because uh, we all got ready there. And uh, we walk, like, we're, we're getting there. And I'm like, I don't have a key to get in the house. And he's like, I don't either. And I'm like, well, I, I'm not, I'm done. I can't drive. And he's like, well, I'm not driving anymore. I'm tired. So we just slept in my car. I'm like, all right, fine. We'll sleep in the car. I woke up the next morning, he had gone, like he, his car was there, so he had left, and he's left the keys in the seat. I, I get out, I stretch, and then uh, I get in my car, and I drive off, and uh, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get some food, and like on my way to get some food, a cop spun around, got behind me, pulled me over, and then he walked up to the car. I'm sure I reeked of alcohol, because I was wearing the outfit I had on the night before, and I had alcohol spilled on me, whatever. But you had a full and night's sleep. I had a full point. night's sleep. And you slept and, in that. Yeah, and I slept in my own clothes. And so he's, he walks up to the car and he's like, sir, I have reason to believe you may be intoxicated right now. And I was like, what? And so 
this is Sunday morning at like eight in the morning. And so I get out of the car and suddenly there are three cop cars behind me now because they have nothing else to do. And so I was just like, oh no. And I'm, I, I'd been awake for all of about five minutes at this point. Same time. Thanks. And so uh, anyway, they give me the field sobriety test and uh, they do the pin test thing. Oops. And uh, my eyes, I guess, twitched a little bit. Cause what they do is they go past your field of view. And so my eye was trying to get to it. And so I was twitching, trying to get over to it. And uh, they, they slapped the cuffs on me and said I was drunk. And I was like, oh, God. And so they but took you breathalyzer. So they took me to the, 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 like the local jail, and then they gave me a breathalyzer test. And I was like almost half the legal limit. So like I blew a .047. Legal limit is .08. So I was under. Oh, there's my record. All right. Is that okay? Is that okay? There's yeah. any information yeah. on here you yeah, don't yeah, yeah. Now that it's up on the up on the thing. It is, pu it is public record, so there's nothing you can really uh, do about it. It's got my weight, height. <laughs> Shannon. Uh, it doesn't have my address. Yeah, okay, that's fine. 205 pounds. Hey. Back, back then, probably. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I blew, I blew under the legal limit, but because an officer arrested me for DUI, or uh, DWI, actually, um, and it was, I took four tests, of which I failed one, which is a subjective test, which the, the police officer says, like, you know, gives me, even though I failed that, I still had to take me to jail, and DWI rules in Texas are so strict that I had to go, I had to just uh, straight up had to go, no matter what, and they took my license and a bunch of stuff. And then I get there and I spent, you know, I had to wait. Um, it was Sunday morning, so all the drunks from Saturday night were all in there. So you had to wait to post bond, but they didn't set my bond amount because the judge was full for the day. So I had to wait till the next morning to get a bond amount posted. So I had to sleep overnight in jail oh, the day after gosh. my sister's wedding. Did you have to take a dump in the, no, in the toilet? No. Oh. no, I was, I was very... Oh my God! Is that that's not real? Is Somebody it? Somebody put a uh, helmet on a pigeon. Someone oh. put a helmet on a pigeon. That's a callback from an old, old one. But anyway, so ultimately, uh, I got a letter in the mail saying like we declined to prosecute your case, and so after two years, it was expunged my record, and so now it's. Did they it's give off. you get your money back for the bond and all that? No. Well, that, that's the thing with bail bonds things. Like, I, I, I don't know. I guess you've never been arrested, but you, they, you post like ten percent of your bond amount, mm -hmm. and then a company will post your full bond amount. And then like, or they'll pay, you know, post the other 90%. And then when you show up for your hearing, they just give it all back to you. So right. you pay a smaller amount, they pay the full amount, and then they just keep whatever you get. I'm that's so. how they make money on it. Yeah. yeah. So really, so, so and it's for, only a problem if you run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You ever see the movie Midnight Run? No. Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro. It's a fantastic movie. It's about Robert De Niro plays a, a bounty hunter who works for a bail bonds place. And he has to go get Charles Grodin. And it's it's just really funny. Yeah. It's a really funny. It's an eighties movie, but it's it really stands up. I think. Hmm. But. I always get that movie confused with uh, Forty Eight Hours. Okay. I don't know why. The I think Murphy movie. They must have, yeah. They must have come out around the same time where I was a kid and I discovered them around the same time. And in my head, there's like wires crossed, and I think of those movies as being the same. Is movie. it is yeah. Eddie Murphy and Robert Redford? It's Eddie Murphy. I know that. I don't remember who else. Is I forget who the other guy in Forty Eight Hours was. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Not yeah. Robert have you ever seen a foot chase between a cop and a dude? A foot chase. I got a yes. friend who's a cop who, uh, you've met him. He comes yeah. by here sometimes. It's, it's kind of funny because when he rolls up and stops in the parking lot, usually when we're grilling, I invite him. We're about, about 400 yards from both a firehouse and a police station. Yeah, right if here. that far. Yeah. So whenever we do grill outs, I always invite the, the, the cops at least to come over because I know my buddy who works over there. And so occasionally we'd be grilling out. A cop car would pull up, and everyone has a reaction to it of, and I think he says a lot about, kind of our country that when you see a cop on the road, your feeling is, oh shit. Yeah, Not like, oh great, there's a cop nearby. I'm protected. Yeah. I don't have that feeling. I feel like I'm about to get in a lot of trouble. So one time he pulled up and he got out and he comes walking across to me and he's just looking, he makes eye contact with me. He's walking up and I just kind of go, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm really sorry, I'll just leave. <laughs> but he would do a really cool thing uh, where he would come fill out his reports in the parking lot. So we had a cop car sitting here because we were never sure when we first moved into this building about the um, security of it. So it was really cool to have just a cop who would sit here. Um, and, and it was really good too when I worked like Red versus Blue like late production or something, yeah. he'd be out there. Anyway, he, uh, he jumped a fence chasing somebody and like blew his knee out. So he had cool. to go, like he, had to, he switched away from this, uh, this station down here just because uh, his, the, you know, he, he was recovering from that. That sucked. Like he jumped a fence and landed like a wet patch of grass. Oh, kind damn. Of that sucks. My town was kind of, in England, there, there was always there would always be fights between rival towns. It wasn't like gang stuff. But fights when, between rival towns. Like you had a rival town. No, it was just like the, the next Shelby town Bar over. <laughs> the next town over. Okay. If there was ever like an event in my town, you know, other towns would come in, and there would like always be like, no. I don't know. We like don't a know fair that. or something. That's not something. So that happens. Happens. another town would be like like your fair sucks. We're gonna wreck it, and they just like they would just come, and there would always be fights because people would get drunk. And I once saw and fair envy. <laughs> and I once saw two cops holding this drunk dude. I think he'd been punched because he was bleeding. 
and he was like swaying and they were like stand up stand up they were both like propping him up like this and I'm, I think it was an act because he was standing there for about five minutes and I was watching him because I was waiting for someone and uh, he literally just went shit and both cops looked he sli- he like slipped out of his jacket and just hauled us and they were both like <laughs> <laughs> and he was running like this like full speed like <laughs> and they were both like probably like one meter behind him and they were both running the exact same speed just forever and they just went off it was one of the funniest things wow. i ever witnessed it was just like i was just watching it. i was like oh my god i can't believe that just happened i saw it one time at uh but numathon downtown when it was at the uh it's a 24-hour movie festival when i was at the ritz um it was like eight in the morning and there was a guy running down sixth street and a guy a cop on a bicycle chasing the guys like get down get down get down he ran. He jumped off the bike like movie, like like movie style, and tackled the guy. Awesome, dude! From his bike, like and a he, cowboy taking on a steer. Yeah, that's it awesome. was amazing. Got the bike around. parked itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet they do that as much as possible because people they know people are well, making fun of them for being bike bicycle. Uh, absolutely. Well, it's also with little helmets. It was stuff. also one of those things. There was like thirty people because the movie had just let out during Button Amathon, and it was like the morning, and everyone was like tired. So like, let's get outside, get some fresh air. And I was like, holy shit, that happened right in front of us. So it was all that was kind of cool. Probably. It, it was a, it was a promotion for that Joseph Gordon been, Levitt but. movie where he's a bike messenger. <laughs> I have to admit, I have to admit that one time I was making a right on red downtown, and I may have made the stop there a little The rolling quicker. stop. Yeah, yeah, a little rolling stop. And a cop on a bike goes, he was there on the other side of the crosswalk, and he goes, he goes, hey, and he points at me, and I made eye contact. He goes, he goes, hey, stop, stop, stop. And I just went, <laughs> <laughs> I just kept going because I was in the car and he was you on a bike. Rebel. You didn't. I did. What I kind of felt like a dick because I'm sure there were other people in the street who were just like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that guy didn't stop me. I, I, did, I did that once <laughs> to uh, a cop on foot. I, feel, I really feel terrible oh, about no. that. I feel terrible about that. What'd you do? I, I did that to a cop who was on foot in Houston. He was yeah. like directing traffic at a light and I didn't yeah. see him. And I went when I wasn't supposed to go. So he was like, he started screaming at me like, you pull over, pull over. I was like, I looked at him, I was like, he doesn't have a car. <laughs> what if he took off? <laughs> what if he writes down your information? I just like took off and just like pulled into a parking garage. I was like, the fucking idiot. <laughs> do you think he will then like fake calling for backup? Because he's not really going to do things. Do you think he was like, <laughs> <laughs> just to make himself look good in front of everyone? I'm sure everyone else in the intersection was like, can I just go? <laughs> I want to go now. now. I've seen cops like, uh, like on foot at corners, like right, like right turns, that are sitting there watching for inspections. Like two guys who will literally sit there and like wait for cars to go because the inspections are marked by color, so they can spot if your expen- your inspection on your car oh, is spot. old. Yeah. And so like to be two of them, literally a cop will like stop like stand in front of you, be like, "All right, you're stopped. Go ahead and pull over right now." I once got pulled over for an expired inspection sticker by a police officer who was in front of me. Oh wow. I was downtown, but my inspection was expired by like two and a half years or something. <laughs> and I was driving, and he was in front of me, and uh, he like pulled over, slowed down, and the guy behind me pulled me over. I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> So he pulls me over, he's like, I pulled you over because I expired inspection. I was like, how did you even see that? You were in front of me. He's like, I was just looking. So he goes, he writes me the ticket, and he comes back, he gives me the ticket, and he goes, I want to say, sir, you by far have the most expired inspection sticker I've ever seen. <laughs> Someone who is like, I can't believe you haven't got a ticket over the past two and a half years. I've had, and I was like, I've had thank that, you. I've had that same situation where a cop was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> I think, you know, in the modern era, he probably would have taken a photo with it or something like that. Yeah. Well, he didn't give me a ticket for it. Did, well, I got a ticket. You did? You see the cop do a selfie with you. <laughs> yeah, check it out. So is there not a fine for that? Yeah, I got a ticket. Yeah, yeah but so what's the, the fine for an inspection or expired license plate, if you go get it done, it's like 10 bucks. It, yeah. it reduces the fine down to almost Yeah, once nothing. you can provide so it's the proof of insurance and then the updated... So it's more cost-effective to not do it for two years and then pay a 10 buck fine. Pretty much. But you kind of live like... I, honestly, every time I saw a cop when I had an expired inspection, I, I felt like tense every single time. <laughs> it's never worth... Well, how, how long does it take to get a new one? It's never Ten worth... Ten minutes. Well, normally it's a huge oh, I'm pain sorry, in the I'm ass. sorry. Does the person who doesn't have a driver's license <laughs> on a car at 25 want to talk to you about how easy it is to get this done? Please... Regale me with more of your knowledge. Listen, we have that place. I, 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 the, one of the things I love most about where our office is right now is there's that place that does inspections literally right across Gus, the street. I have my over cars there. inspected now. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just talking All about right. how quick it is. God. <laughs> Fucking Mr. Sensitive I, over there. I'm not. Look, I signed this guy up for driver school. We've talked about this. A hot girl came to town. <laughs> that is true. That is is true. she still here? No. No. But he didn't book me another one. <laughs> <laughs> I brought him to the thing. Hey, can I circle back on a couple things? Sure. So um, earlier we were talking about uh, um, Gavin getting stopped and wanting to, like, 
have them check his bag and then everything's fine. Do you ever have, Gus, because you're a socially awkward person, do you ever have that feeling when you're in a retail store or No eye contact, business? see? Socially Where, awkward. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading the fucking Twitter. You he, cut to me on this? He, he, <laughs> do you ever, I ever have myself in a situation where... Do you ever have the feeling that you kind of have to act in a way that proves you're not shoplifting? They're not cutting away Like that you're being scrutinized? I do worry about that sometimes. I don't know why. It's like, if I'm, especially during winter when I have a coat on and I have like my hands in my pockets and I'm like looking at stuff like, someone watching me, do they think like... There's yeah, stuff that, in my pocket. Do you hold your hands in a certain way to prove to people? It's like, like yeah, I hold the them point. out. Like <laughs> That's the point I'm making. You don't have to do that because I would like to be stopped and be like, hey, you shoplifting? I'll be like, no. Look. Yeah. 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 See? Would you, let them, would you let them check you? Yeah. Well, I'm in their store. I would, you should, what does that mean? You have to, they don't have the, the right property. To, they don't have the right to search you. Well, they can if they want. I mean, they're 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 no, police. they don't. What? I, no, I, mean, I, I, can, but I mean, I wouldn't mind. I don't care. What have I got on me? Well, I'm with Gavin, there's a thing that, like, when you go to some stores in the U.S. where they will stop you at the door and check your receipt and check your bag. Like, Sam's Club is one that does that. I find that so obnoxious. It's obnoxious. It is obnoxious. But it's just, like, that's just the way it is there. I know that before I walk into that store. So when they check my receipt, I don't make a big deal about it. But it seems like every other time I go there, I see somebody raising a huge stink about how they have no right to check their receipt. That they, they've purchased the stuff and it's theirs. So and if they don't have the right to check, what's stopping you just from walking on? There's nothing. Oh, we'll just do that then. Well, they just have to, like, they can't... I, I think in America, there's a, the prevailing attitude is that you don't want to be treated like a criminal when you're not doing anything wrong. That's like the whole privacy thing. Like, why are you collecting my thumbprint? I haven't been accused of a crime. I was instructed when I worked at this, a supermarket to, if I saw someone shoplifting, just, I couldn't do anything to Let them. Let them go, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't say, can you put those back? I couldn't say, I couldn't take them off him yeah. by force. So we once had a guy walk in, take like this massive bottle of vodka, and he was like, I'm taking it. And he just walked straight out with it. What and we were like, is. and my manager was like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, when I worked. called 999? Yeah. When I worked in a. Uh, there was the dude later who was like, shit, and then ran <laughs> off. I didn't think it was 99 because it wasn't really an emergency. They probably Because yeah. the police station was actually next door. What, right. is the, uh, what is the non-emergency number in the UK? Number of the police station? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, is don't. there actually a. U- we do, we have 611 in the US. Uh, we oh, really? That like, works? Huh? That's no, 311, isn't it? Is it 311? 311? 611, I think, is maybe in from. 411 is information. 311 is. We might have 111 or something. That's like minor emergency. Or it's like, yeah, like it was like you report a traffic accident on 311. What about a medium emergency? Like a traffic accident, no one would get hurt in. Like, what a, about like a fender bender, you would call 311. What about code orange? Discretion. Yeah, yeah. What about what? Code orange. <laughs> a medium emergency. I thought it was six one one. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, when, when I worked, I worked in an arcade, and uh, like my first job out of high school, or when I was in high school, sixteen years old, and we had like a money belt around us because people, more than anything, people wanted change, so we'd have like a lot of ones and stuff. I bet and, you look good in that. You know, it was awesome. It was a little apron. <laughs> and it was great, and uh, and they specifically said if anyone asks for your belt, just hand it to them. Jack's right. Like, Three one one. Yeah, it's yeah. like you hand it to them. Don't fight and don't chase them. Yeah. And it's like you know, I mean, it was only like maybe two hundred bucks, but at any point, someone could just grab it and run and be like. Yeah, it was the same on the on the checkouts. They don't want anyone. Never getting, happened. But. They don't want anyone getting stabbed. So it was just like, yeah, just hand it over immediately, and they'll walk out with it. Yeah, it's not worth it. It never is. I mean, you know, you, the inclination is to fight it, but just let it go. It didn't yeah. happen very much. We have so many cameras that people were really that dumb. Especially, Except for that one guy who really wanted that bottle yeah. of vodka. Yeah. I mean, especially now with like you know with with credit cards and debit cards, is there any place to rob that would be worth robbing? Like, I mean, is there, is there any, like, giant vault of money anywhere anymore? Like, it all, it's all digital Payday now. too? Well, yeah, pay, I mean, payday too, but I mean... You get a drill that breaks down every 30 seconds. God, a five-minute drill in a bank. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, I mean, like, really, I mean, like, there's no, I mean... I mean, I guess a casino. Other than that, like, I can't think of a large... I, fucking rob a casino. Good luck with yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, like, is there any place with a large amount of money? A Probably large one amount of those of cash. secure vans is, is a good move. But even then, it's not going to be as much as it once was. Because, I mean, like, those vans go around to, like... They'll go to, like, you know, shopping centers. Like, we had one... Yeah, but they fill store. up, like, ATMs and stuff. Those vans have a lot of money in them. Really? Yeah. Mm. They, they also have big I was dive a, bombs in I them. I was at the Bat Festival this weekend. And the, the, the clouds of bats coming out from under the bridge right now are awesome. You should go check that mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, it's very seasonal where those bats arrive and they're underneath the Congress Bridge. Um, but there was a beer place there. That place was taking in a lot of cash. Yeah. So no, Actually, I was going to say, like, music festivals might be the only thing. I yeah. think, or, like, a, a festival. <laughs> so, yeah. but I don't know. Can I yeah. go back on one more thing? Do it. Uh, we talked about the PS4, uh, excuse me, the PSN uh, leaking GTA 5. 
just recently, or yeah, yeah. elements of GTA Five now, they think. Uh, that, you remember that happened before, too. Do you remember, was it Halo Reach, or was it Halo 4 that went up on Xbox Live for like 9,999 oh, points? It was Reach, right? Yeah. And then they're like, oh, we'll just put it up for all those points, and no one will have that many points to do it, or like 99,000 points. It was way more. It was like 9 million or something. And, it was a crazy amount. And then people were just downloading it. Like really? They found a hack for it and got... They had the, so Microsoft inadvertently released Reach on their own. So, so wait, what was the... They had done it's that, happened before. They had yeah. done that for like promo and press copies, where the press could download it with a code. Right. But they had yeah. to have it in the store, so they just put a ridiculously high cost on it. That's what it was. No one would buy it. So they can't hide stuff. They, they uh, must be able to. They I, could have. I think it was unlisted. Mm, but if you yeah. knew like the URL, you could find. I it. say because I got Crackdown Two sent to me via digital copy before it was out. Same sort of deal, where it's just like you know, here's a code for it, and it's boom, downloaded it to my account. I have a. I took a picture of my screen. It was when Bernie, you sent me a code for Halo Reach. It was the multiplayer testing, I think. Yeah. And there were seven people online. And right. we would go into matchmaking, and we would just play with the same people every time. Why would you bother? Like, at that point, just, like, party up. Yeah. Like, all right, yeah. well, we'll keep playing. I remember playing. we got a Trials Evolution early, or, like, a new DLC for Trials Evolution early. And it was, like, literally me and one other guy on the planet had it. Because, like, we, we were on the leaderboards. It was just the two of us playing. And so I could see his score, and he, like, would just back and forth. Like, you for, didn't, you take, didn't you take pictures of yourself as, like, the number one I in the world so. on various yeah, yeah. leaderboards? And so, uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was just, it was cool. Because, like, really, like, pretty much as soon as they got access to it, like, uh, one of the guys over there contacted me. He's like, hey, here's a code for it. And I was like, oh, cool. Ray and looked, like, and oh, I... There's no one on. Ray looked, and he said that Michael was the second person in the world to 100% Saints Row 4. Really? Yeah. Someone beat him. Yeah. It's kind of surprising. I guess maybe someone who had to test it that it worked on the retail copy. Yeah. Huh. That's funny. Yeah, How do we, we tell that? We got Saints Row early. Yeah. Ray, yeah, Ray I think knows everything because, about. because they both 100%ed it before it came out, so I'm sure you could find... But how would you determine the number of people who have 100 percent of the game? And the By order. checking the, the date of their last achievement? Yeah, but every, oh, that he did sense. that for every account on Xbox Live? Well, I imagine there weren't that many with 100% in Saints Row 4. But how do you find people who have 100% in Saints Row 4? That's what I'm saying. How do you find people who played Saints Row 4? The, on the what? There's ones you can sign up for that will log your stuff, but there's no, there's no one that just goes and is, you know, scrapes everything. Yeah. No, Isn't there's that, not. Like, there's, I lead, there's like, like, if, like Just let's say for this podcast, I want to find out which of us have 100% in Left 4 Dead 2. For instance, how would yeah. I do that? You'd have to go to like. Rap. I could go yeah. to your accounts and look to see yeah, if yeah. you've done it and compare because you're my friends. That's but how would I just find everybody who's ever 100 percent Left 4 Dead 2? The, Isn't that leadable? No, for, there's websites you can go if you sign up for it. It adds you to yeah. like the, the database. He might be on one of those, but there's no sort of general like there's no you can't search Xbox.com and find that. We'll have to call Ray out on this. Mm. Well, I mean, like he, I think he's be on the, the second week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's, been, wa- he's watching. Yeah, he's he's probably like the second person. You know, I mean, that, all, that could be absolutely true, but he's probably the second person on you know whatever website that you have to log into. Like, what was the one? Is it uh, not my gamer tag? Which true was, achievements? Was it true achievements that had the list of like mygamercard.net? Yeah, maybe it's my gamer card. Well, no, that's gone. Now, that's right? gone now. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Do you ever wonder how many times your account has been friend requested? <sighs> uh, no. I don't. I wonder how many messages I've gotten. It's, say I say I have ninety friends and I have ten slots where I just get friend requests. Yeah. If I delete those friend requests, in two minutes they'll they'll be ten different ones. Yeah. And it's like how many people have seen cannot add Gavin there free because his friend list is full. Right. How many people? How many different accounts have seen that? Because well, we all have very public gamer tags. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, just consider the number of people who try like watch a video and then just try it. I mean, if it's a million and one tries every minute, it's a million minutes before you get through all those people. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it, it's a large number of people to watch the videos. I still, yeah. I still have friends that, like, their gamer tags have popped up in yeah. achievement guides. I like, old achievement guides. And they're like, I'm still getting friend requests from, like, like my, my, well, I don't want to say his gamer tag, but I have friends, literally from a Call of Duty guide we did forever ago, like, Call of Duty, like, Modern Warfare 1, and he still gets requests from it. And it's like... Jesus Christ, and I and also I have the friends of friends list thing. So like you know you can you can oh, okay. you can see my friends if you if you you know look at my account, and I have my friends get hit because like how do you know Jack? How do you know Jack? How do you know Jack? And it's just like that's pretty trippy. Yeah. But it's weird. It's like playing online now. Like Joel and I played a shitload of Payday Two this weekend, and pretty much every party that random people would jump into would would recognize one of us. I got so mad when you tweeted looking for a fourth for Payday Two the other night. Oh yeah, and I was like I'm sitting right here. Were you on? I didn't see you on. Yeah. Oh, I was shit. like, fucking Jack didn't even yeah, know. Payday 2 finally did something smart. They put it out digital right the away. Well, no, not right away. Like it, took, it took two weeks. Well, you know, but that's pretty fast for or Microsoft. Week, yeah. I mean, most Sony games, they come out day of. They're digital. Microsoft takes a lot longer for their titles. Yeah. And they, should, they shouldn't. 
So there's yeah. a way to do those just stealth without the cops. Almost every mission you can do, almost, not all of them, but almost every mission you can do. Um, <laughs> you can, shit. You can, I'm calling oh, such bullshit. bullshit. Okay, any, any one you can do, you have a casing mode, yes. you can do those stealth. Bullshit. Any, any, you tell me how to rob that fucking bank. Uh, you can do it. I've seen it done. Trust me. No way. Do, but, uh, yeah, yeah. do four stores. All right. And four four and stores might be a little bit tougher, but I know I know you can do the bank and the jewelry store for sure. <laughs> Fucking so, Joel, Joel, Joel and I did the jewelry store. We did it stealth. What triggers? I haven't played it. What triggers the cops? The triggers the everything. Cops, pretty much everything. You, you want, asking that question triggers the cops. <laughs> They're coming. Uh, <laughs> c uh, civilians seeing you with your mask on in the street, they'll, that'll trigger cops. Getting um, too close to a security guard get, at all. Yeah. And also, if you knock out a security guard, like silently, you have to then get on their radio and respond to people. Because they'll be like, you know, hey, what's going on, Billy? And, and so you have to actually talk to someone. Every now and then, it just won't work. They'll be like, they, you didn't convince the person. And then it's like, oh, and It's part the of the skill tree for the leadership guy. Uh, if a leadership camera sees yeah, mastermind. you, cops. So yeah. wait, if, if, That's a paddling. if the security guard's out cold, <laughs> do you have to just babysit the body and keep responding? No, no just, once. just once. It's okay. just, just one time. And or then, if you... Smash glass, they'll hear that you're smashing glass out yeah. on the street and then they call a gun. Or if yeah. you fire a gun, and even if no one sees it, someone will hear the gunshot somewhere. Yeah. So or if like they hear cops. your drill. So like the jewelry one, you have to like there's there's some security guards walking around behind the building. So you send someone back there, they throw their mask on, they wait till the security guard has their back turned, knock them out, get on the radio, say, Oh, everything's okay, don't worry about me. You have another guy out in front who takes care of the secure or takes care of the civilians out front. So he throws a mask on, tells everyone to get down, everyone gets down, you tie them up, then once you have everyone outside tied up and the guys in the back taken care of, then you rush the store, two in the back, two in the front, tell everyone to get down. A security guard tries to shoot you. You knock him out, get on his radio. Then you, you basically tell the guy it's okay, and then you tie every single person up, and then you can rob the store. And then See, you this... turn around and shoot all the cops that are coming in the front door, because that's what happens every time. Because they're in like a river. It's like the burly brawl. They're just like, <laughs> pouring in, and you're like, where the fuck are all these cops coming from? weaving everywhere. It was, it was me, Joel, and Andrew Panton, actually, playing pretty much nonstop this weekend. Right, you, you two have got to record. you got to do a Let's Play. Okay. And, and put it up as a walkthrough or something. No, we actually, I talked to Ray about that today, because there are... Like, getting through those things stealth is the hardest thing to do, but I know people are looking for those guys. Get through it stealth with Gavin playing, too. That no, would be that would amazing. never work. That would be amazing. I'm, actually, no. I'm good at stealth games when I'm on my own. It's I, a I've lot like Hitman, because you play Hitman. I play a lot of, I've been playing a lot of Blacklist as well. You do it stealth up to a point, and then things fall to shit, and then you start shooting everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blacklist is so fucking hard. It's is it really harder, hard. Is it harder than other games? It's way like, harder than the other ones. I've played a lot of games, and I'm like, on the first, on the second level, I'm like, what the fuck? How do I do this? And I'm not even on the hardest difficulty. I'm unrealistic. I'm yeah. not perfectionist. I thought about doing realistic, but I was like, I'll just do normal. I'm normal, it's hard. Yeah, there, there's moments where I get all the way to the end and I'm doing it perfect. And the thing about that is you, you can do different kind of trees. You can do combat where it's just Ghost, like loud. panther, and yeah. assault. Yeah, assault. And panther is like, you're killing people, but you're not, you're doing it, you know, <laughs> silently. Not. And then there's ghost, which is, the, to get the best score in ghost, you don't interact with anyone. Right. So every objective you do, it will say how many people you haven't, who haven't detected you. And I play every level like that at first, where I'm like, oh, and I get to the objective, it's like, 10 people didn't detect you. It's like, yeah, you get to the next one. And then some prick will detect me. And in the end, I just end up just blasting my way through the it. And I just ruin everything that I did. I'll start drinking. And then it's like, yeah. once you've been drinking a little bit, it's like, forget Ghost, it's out the window. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you start trying to play like, Panther or Assault, like your little fucking silence gun doesn't hold very many, it's like 30 bullets. There, I fucking shot a dude like seven <laughs> times and he didn't die. I was like, how the hell did I put seven bullets in that guy? And then there's the heavies, <laughs> where you can't shock them and you can't gas them. You actually have to go hand to hand with them or shoot them in the, in the face. It's hard. Yeah. Moral of the story, it's a hard game. It's really People fun, on Twitter though. are agreeing with you, saying Splinter Cell Blacklist is indeed hard as fuck. But I, I'm, I'm happy that it's hard. It's making me play every level like 20 times. Yeah, you, you look at it and you're like... What did I miss? What did I do wrong? Yeah. You like have to revisit, reanalyze everything. Yeah, let me read this. Splinter Cell is Ashley's game. She went undefeated in the the like launch for the game. She went forty hours straight when she was a frag doll. Wow. Yeah. So for three days straight of the launch at the Best Buy where they're holding launch event, she was undefeated. Wow. Congratulations. So, look at that. <laughs> no look at the pride she has over there. Uh, here, let me read this thing. I want to remind everyone that this episode of Rooster's Podcast is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, AlphaBrain. AlphaBrain is an all-natural supplement. It's the first fully balanced nootropic designed to raise levels of all major neurotransmitters and clear out mental fog. Uh, so what that means for you, it's faster mental speed, quicker reaction time, increased focus, uh, increased motivation and mental drive, improvement in word recall, conversation flow, and a boost to neuro and physical health. They've been a long time sponsor. I'm a big fan of the Alpha Brain product. 
So if you visit uh, onnit.com slash gaming and use promo code ROOSTER, you can get up to 10% off of your order. That's onnit.com, O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash gaming. So big fan of them. Another Austin-based company. Hey! Hey! <laughs> so um, Blacklist is... Okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's not just me who thought it was super hard. I will say... I still have not played Spies vs. Smurfs. Dude, we played that. I played that today for the first time. That is so by the way, much fun. I was terrible. In, by the way, you were really good for someone who was playing it for the first time. You really? should have seen the Let's Play we did the other day where it was, three, it was two versus two. Yeah. We were all just fumbling really? around like really crap. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's because we could... Take to work. For me, it was same day. <laughs> what? Well, for me, it was you. same day, first day. Same day? I wonder if we could do like a Let's Play and then do a Let's Play with Onnit. Like if we could like test it that way. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean that. As you were you saying, Gavin. You guys got me thinking about that. Just, well, so I would um, say the sniper is a big help if you haven't got that already. Um, oh, I was answering one more thing of his question. At, um, the adults are at RTX, they did uh, a tournament with, uh, with T-Squared, who's one of their spokespeople who takes uh, Alpha Brain. I think yeah. they were doing uh, Halo tournaments. Yeah. Oh, really? For yeah, we had him up on stage with, with the, uh, some of the Achievement Hunter guys versus him and some crowd members. It was fun. How did that go? I had never saw it. Was that. Fun. It was fun. It was pretty cool. Like, I actually, they sponsored a guy to come to RTX, like a, uh, like a fan. Like a, someone won a contest. So we ended up doing some competitions with all of us. And it was good back and forth. It was fun times. That's cool. Those guys, people are so good at Halo. <laughs> Like yeah. shooting games, I, I just I can't do it. I just like the one thing I like about Payday. What is raining here? The thing I like about Payday is I, I'm a I like the class I play is Mastermind, which is basically you keep everyone else up. It's basically the medic class yeah. kind of thing, where it's like you have you you have the ability to get people to get down, like you know tell people like, you know get down and you tie them up, and then you also have the ability like your super special is you can shout at someone who's down and they'll get up. So, like, if someone gets down across the way, I can yell at them like and they'll teammate? pop back up. Yeah, a teammate. Yeah. You can, like, mind. shout at someone? Yeah. That sounds like Sarge from Red vs. Blue. It's like, that's his, <laughs> that's his idea of, like, medical help is yelling at someone until <laughs> they get back up from their Dude, injury. That game, that game is so much fun. Joel and I were playing, or no, Andrew and I were playing, and at one point, like, we were just in the middle of the night, and some dude jumped in our party. We were level, like, mid-30s, like, maybe 31, 32, something like that. A guy jumped in our party who was level 99. The dude was a tank. It was like, might as well, he just had four wheels or in treads. Like, this dude, he was just walking down hallways and just taking out everybody did, did around him. Did he have him. C4? Uh, he, I think, he may have. We, the, the quests we had, or the missions uh -huh. we had, didn't require C4. But, I mean, it was just like, just get behind that guy and let him take all the damage. You know, it's a funny joke until you play in a game where someone has C4, oh, and the game lasts like 30 seconds. It's so good. It's like you, you walk in the bank, you go, get down, get down, and then the guy goes, boom, safe's open, let's go. Well, the bank the bank requires five minutes of drill anyway. The thermal drill always takes five minutes, no matter what. What okay. is the C4 used for? Uh, it's it's safes. Smaller okay. doors. Yeah, but yeah. The, the bank. Whatever mission we were doing, it was like, it was like, what the hell just happened, guys? He said, oh, I had C4. Yeah. Can you use oh. thermite? Uh, no. Uh, we, uh, we played around a bit with that, with the podcast crew. Oh, really? Last week. How did it turn out? Turned out all right. Trying yeah. to figure out. It's, it's, it's a bit too long trying to figure out. It how was to a different group. It was me and Gus down. and Jordan and Brandon. Yeah. So it was a really different group. Because no. there's no system link play. Yeah. So I had to find people who had their, their gamer profiles with them. Right. Yeah. So, so S at, the beginning of, at the beginning of the uh, Let's Play, Brandon goes, somehow I think I'm not the first person you had in mind for this. <laughs> <laughs> System Link is non-existent these yeah. days. We're playing Rainbow Six Vegas 2 right now, a game that came out, what, like 2006 or something, and there's System Link in the multiplayer options. Like, oh, Oddly, man. doesn't get rid of the lag, though. No, yeah, there's still lag in it. <laughs> is there System Link in uh, Blacklist? I don't think no, there is, right? It's I don't all think so. Well, actually, we tried to do a Let's Play when you weren't there, yeah. and we couldn't because the servers were down. No, Even though, I, no, I was there. I was oh, trying to get in. Yeah, yeah oh, right, I was able there. to play. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It was just yeah. uh, all the, in the same room, and we couldn't because they're yeah. servers. Six of us in the same room, and we couldn't play. But I, I watched your Payday Let's Play, and it was funny. And you were getting a bunch of crap in the comments. Dude, okay. From the audience. This is what I don't get about our audience. Because yeah. I'm not you, first of all. I'm not the funny British This kid. is what I don't understand. People don't like it if we're different in one, in one game as we are yeah. in another game. Like, like, why do we have to be the exact same, in the exact same mood every single video like, we're in? Yeah, that, like that Let's Play, I was, just, I was acting goofy as hell. Because that game was legitimately fun. Like, yeah. I was having a lot of fun playing that and game. And when you're having fun, you just do whatever you want to yeah, do. Yeah, like, hey. so I was being, I mean, also, it's one of those things where I know I'm not that good as far as, like, you know, headshots and shooting people and stuff. So I'm like, screw it, I'll stay in back and let them do all the, like, yeah. the hard work, and I'll, like, help everyone else out. So I was just running around being goofy and yeah. shit. And, but I caught so much people flag like, for that. why is Jack being like this? And it's like, because that's Jack, and that's how he was being <laughs> in that video. Because I was enjoying myself. I was having a good the time. The audience doesn't get to say time. how we act in our videos. Yeah. That's not something they have, right? So, 
Well, they can criticize. They, can oh, they, yeah. can criticize. Oh, they, they do a great job of criticizing, trust me. I was amazed by it. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. People, people are, are pretty vicious. YouTube commenters, man, like, I don't know. It, it's, it seems like the internet has gotten more and more negative over the last five, six years. I can tell you that five, it seems like years. the longer anything lasts, like, as a, as especially the more popular it gets, yeah. it seems to skew younger, honestly. Like, any platform. Yeah. Like, Dig was that way, and some other forums, I don't want to call anybody out, but other forums are, like, it's clearly just skewing younger. And you can watch, it's like, they all go through the same cycles, and then people move on to something else. On Reddit in particular, um, people, when I was talking to the patch about where I get some of my gaming news, I talked about the gaming subreddit. And everyone's like, don't go to the gaming subreddit, go to the games subreddit. It's a different one. And that's, a, that's the best example I could show of that, is, like, gaming is the auto-subscribe subreddit on Reddit, and it's it started off as gaming discussions, and then it devolved into just, just memes, pictures, of just pictures, games. and yeah. people holding the game. Like, look what I got! It's like you had sixty bucks, great, and you bought a game. Um, you know, <laughs> then and you go to the games, and it's like comments on like, here's information about like uh, the new upcoming shaders in this new engine, you know, and yeah. things like that. And it's that discussion, and it's like. It is interesting that people have to do that. They have to like carve themselves away from very visible stuff yeah. to get to a normal discussion. Because the longer something exists, it eventually it's just the rule of the internet. Because younger people and the younger you go, the more time they have and they don't have anything else to do, they just take it over. Yeah. And it's just it's just a function of spare time is what it is. And then it, it like slowly well, evolves into like that, you that's, know, something that's like, else. That's like the whole free to play argument. I mean, we talked about this a little bit on the patch, but. It's like, you know, people lose their minds about microtransactions and free-to-play. And it's just like, the older you get, the more you're comfortable with that stuff. Like, if Battlefield 4 came out and you could spend $15 to unlock every weapon in the game, but there was still an option where if you wanted to play through the whole game and just unlock all the weapons slowly through progression, right? I would be 100% okay with that. If someone wants to spend the money to do that, I'm fine with that. But but, do you worry about the unbalanced aspect in multiplayer? But no, no, that's the thing, because anyone can get to that point. And it's just going to take them a while. So it's kind of like, eh, how's right, that unbalanced? Like, what if you have two level one players, right? And you're yeah. in like your new level one hopper for the game. And your first level one player doesn't have any of those guns yet. We have other level one players who have more powerful guns because they've played for it. Fair or play. they paid for it. I guess they could separate that out, though. They could detect but which ones have bought also, it. Also, theoretically, someone who buys guns probably won't be as skilled as someone who earned that gun. Right, but I'm talking like early on. Yeah, yeah, but even so, but it's like, you know, you're going to work harder and you're going to become a better player because you're facing people that have tougher stuff. It's, it's like, the, the yeah, but it's still frustrating. You it's, can tell yourself that, but it's like getting yeah, beat up as a kid and be like, this is going to give me character <laughs> down the road. In it's Rudy. Years. It's Rudy. That's all it is, man. It's the Rudy effect. It is fun having better stuff than everyone else. Though. Like, you know, I split this out once. Oh, one. Jesus I Christ. I had the drone and you didn't, and I was just flying that drone. I just yeah. like crashed into a head. But it took me all it, about so. three games to kind of get my bearings. Like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like, so it's like, all right. You I know. highly recommend. Uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist, even yeah. though Michael Ironside isn't in it, which I'm very sad about. Yeah, and, and Sam Fisher looks completely different now for some he look, reason. He looks like Commander Shepard to me. Yeah. He's he, looked different in every single game, though. No, the I guess fir- so. the, Maybe the first three, it was consistent Sam Fisher look, but all the others, he's going to be pl- completely different. He got older in... Um, he got older, then younger, and then yeah, older. Yeah, like I thought he was older in Conviction than he is now. He looked older in Conviction. Yeah, well, the, last, the last one, he definitely looked really old. It was like you're the old dog, you know. Fighting. And in this game, references stuff that happened in Conviction, like he was oh, in really? the past. And in Double Agent, he was all haggard looking with a shaved head. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. But yeah, I would love to do some payday stuff. Like, you, I think if you really focused on this game, you would actually have a lot of fun with it as far as the actual, like, sort of planning yeah, phase and I stuff. I want to do one. Jeff like, wants to do one too because he wasn't in the Let's Play either. So yeah, maybe we Because it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you go into it just, you know, balls out, just like acting stupid, you're gonna, it's gonna be, you know, just run and gun the whole damn time. Yeah, but. But if you actually plan it out, like, that's the, that's the most fun I have is like. It's hard to plan it yeah, out. Yeah. We. You, if you can get four people in the same room talking together and be like, okay, all right, on three, everyone go and go. You know, walk like us through. Like we'll that. do when you walk us through. Yeah, but it's still okay, like I'll do it. everything finds you. Like you're, yeah. you're literally standing there casing things out and a security guard bumps into you and you're like, oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, it's tricky. Been alerted. I mean, it, it's it, like it's tricky. But I remember the first time Joel and I got one stealth. We got the jewelry store stealth. It was just like, this is so awesome. Like, that being like, said. You feel like a god. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone's down here just taking all the jewelry right in front of them. You that. Like that, your escape car never left. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah. This Doing is awesome. a mission where you don't have to fight anything, that should be a very rare occurrence. Yeah. Really, oh, no. Is no, there I, an achievement associated with it? Uh, yes, there is one. There's one to get four bags of jewelry in the escape car before the cops show up. Yeah. Which so is what, basically doing it stealth. Yeah. When it all erupts into a, just a fight against the cops, is it fun? 
It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's horde mode at that point because yeah, they start out, they, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the by the end, of it, there's like juggernauts running in with like you know full armor suits and stuff. Yeah, and payday does get a little repetitive in, in that sense. Yeah, but that. I mean, they, it, it is it, it's fun to they try the same things. I mean, I enjoy the repetitiveness as far as like trying to like okay, we, what did we mess up on last time? Let's let's fix that and get better at this time. There is a mission that I have yet to get all the way through, and that's the paintings one. In the yeah, the, I've, I've tried the paintings one once. Have you done the meth one? No. The meth one's fun. You actually have to like. You get into this house, it's a meth house, and you have to cook meth, and then actually take the meth, and then it's like a three-day event. And so, depending on how much meth you cook, you get more money at the final payday on the third day. Yeah, there are some that are interesting where it's, it's multiple missions for one overall payday. No. Like, you do three days. The most I've ever done is two days. I did the one where you move the coke, and then you deliver the coke to the boat. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's that's rats, I believe is what it's called. Or no, Watch Dogs. That's Watch, Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs, yep. Um, yeah, I, I, dude, I played a lot of this game. It's, it's, it's the first game in a long time I've played a lot of. You can always see, you can see anywhere on your HUD, you can see, like, through walls when a drill goes down and you have to restart a drill. But you can also see, like, your packages, like your Coke, uh, and there's these big duffel bags full of Coke. And then you'll see one of them, like, lean up and then start walking away because <laughs> yeah. the cop's taking it. And you're like, F you're not fucking taking that. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, you hunt the guy down and shoot him. Nothing, nothing's worse than that, or, or, you know, that's always fun to watch the, the coke slowly running away. But also, on that same mission, where you, you have to throw the coke into a boat at one point, if you miss, the coke respawns on the other side of the map. Fuck that. And Across so, that fence again? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, forget that. Did you notice on the fence, you throw it over the fence? Yeah. That's, that's the best thing to do. I'm not good at that. I'm good at that I stuff. I have to get on top of the dumpster to do it. Again, that's, that's my thing. It's like, I, I love the skill-based games where it's like, okay, what are you good at? You can find your role in that. Like, mine, I, like, I'm, I'm sort of the scout slash mastermind type yeah. player where like I can go you know like I'll be I'll run out and I'll get the stuff throw it away and then you know run back and help out but when it comes to like, killing stuff I'm not good at that one thing stuff. that we should do for the patch is uh, every time we cover like one game that like kind of like snuck by that people didn't play um, and I know people like not a lot of people are playing Payday 2 no well, it's hard to find yeah it's hard to find well that's digital on yeah, Xbox yeah, yeah. at least um, is, it a, is it a PlayStation title? I mean, yeah, it was, I have, it was actually day one on PlayStation. I have it on both PC and I have it on Xbox. Nice. <laughs> Just because uh, it was available on PC. And <coughs> it I wanted, was hard to find, yeah. On, I on to Steam, you could have bought it, like, mm. instantly. Yeah. yeah. Steam and, and Steam, PlayStation. Steam, you could even buy a four-pack, I think, for, uh, I want to say, like, 90 bucks. Oh, yeah. Wow. One of the, cool. uh, I know it's coming, but man, Microsoft's really got to get with the times. And they well, I think I think they were trying to. I think that was the whole point of the Xbox One. Just was, just the day one digital is what I'm talking about. Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna fall on a rabbit hole talking about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But well, I they're mean, obviously day, behind the curve on that. Day stuff. one digital is gonna come with Xbox One, right? Isn't everything gonna be day one I digital? I think they announced that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't. Even, who can even keep it straight anymore? Well, I hope it comes with a controller at this point. <laughs> you know, it's like it's got the Rumble controller. Come on. Yeah, that's a badass controller. Yeah. You know, it's just like you never. It's hard to keep it all straight because it yeah. changes day by day. You know, so, I wonder, I, I'm curious to see, Microsoft seems to be in a very reactive phase. I'm curious to see how they react to Sony doing a very intelligent thing and giving all the GameStop managers. I heard a rumor that GameStop managers were also now getting an Xbox One as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true or not. They should totally do it. So I mean, everyone I, should look, become, I know it's going to yeah, seem like yeah. they're like copying Sony. Yeah. That's a smart move that Sony did. Having those GameStop managers have it. You know, we did one time when we were selling it. Um, GameStop. There's a bunch of actually red versus blue polos that are in the lobby right now because we printed out red versus blue polos and gave them to all the GameStop managers. And they also have the GameStop logo on the sleeve. Yeah, and it says red versus blue under the Rushik logo. Um, it's a it's a pretty it's the only shirt like that. They show up on eBay because GameStop managers would sell them sometimes. But we did that because then they'd wear it to work and it was an approved shirt because it said GameStop on it. But then it also had red versus blue in it, so it would advertise the show and the DVDs that they were selling in the store. We don't sell DVDs at GameStop anymore because they don't sell DVDs. One year, though, had the idea that GameStop managers would always talk about how they would play stuff in the store, and they liked to play Red versus Blue, but it was something they couldn't play because of the language in it. So we made a version of one of the seasons that had all the, like, the words cut out or bleeped, <laughs> uh, and it was like a safe-for-work version of Red versus Blue, and we gave away a copy of that to all the GameStop managers. And... It was kind of like the unwritten thing was that they played at work. Nice. You know, and then people would be in GameStop going, what's that? And then they go buy it. I think and I subtitled one of those ones. Yeah, and they, they were then the... Because then we subtitled it because they also turn it down. Right. So it's not playing over everything, so people would still know what it was. And uh, yeah, we, we kind of like circumvented the system a little bit there of <laughs> nice. in-store advertising because we knew they would play it. It worked yeah. out pretty well. So Yeah, God, I haven't, I haven't thought about those in a long time. Yeah. Joel's yeah. tweeting me right now about Payday, by the way. Oh, is he? <laughs> He's playing. We didn't talk about uh, Steve Ballmer. Is set, oh, yeah. he's going to step down as CEO of Microsoft. Developers, developers, developers. I read developers. a stat that said when he took over as CEO of Microsoft, that the company was worth 
what was it I said? 900 billion? Is that possibly correct? 900, I think it was maybe nine. Maybe it's 900 billion. That does seem like, uh, now that I'm saying the number, it seems crazy. It seems like an oil company. Yeah. When he it took over, it was worth like, good. the company was worth like 900 billion. And uh, uh, the day of his resignation, it was worth 232 billion. Jesus. Yeah. So that's a big, big it's drop. 50% drop, yeah. Yeah. Or more than that, yeah. yeah or, you know, 66 How, how can you million. value a company at that much? That's it's like a, saying a bajillion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's, in, it's getting close to a trillion dollars. Evil. Well, no one can buy it. <laughs> I'm totally yeah. working from memory on that. I'm sure someone can give me the actual well, How much is Apple worth right now? Apple's worth a shitload. And my laptop's about, about two grand, so <laughs> multiply that by whatever. I'm so mad. I smashed the screen on mine. I you, smashed you, mine, too. Yeah. Gavin and I both have smashed screens. You want to go to the Apple store? <laughs> I did this thing where I had my iPhone like this, and here's my laptop. I had my iPhone like this, and I was like, do, 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 and I fumbled it. I was like, oops, I got to catch my <laughs> iPhone, and it smashed into my laptop screen and shattered my screen. That is oh. a- Apple's ideal situation. It's when <laughs> one of their own products breaks the other one, and then you have to pay for it. <laughs> I, I said it was like sibling rivalry. You know, it's yeah. like it smashed it, and I have this big crack. Dude, what, what are so the, I, I've got it right here. When Ballmer became CEO, Microsoft had a market value of uh, $604 billion. Six, 600, not 900. Oh. Now, Good Microsoft's God. market value is $269 billion. There wow. we go. So it's lost half its value. More than 69, though. When well, that's the sex thing. $335 billion down. <laughs> and then when he announced, I mean, the, the worst part, like the salt in the wound, is he announces his resignation and the stock rises 7%. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, you it. know, that's not, I, you know, whatever you think about Bomber, uh, the market rewards change and they reward corrections. Like when they lay off, 400 people and close down a branch, their stock goes up. Right, but you can, you can attribute ta- that to lowered expenses, lowered cost. It's just a change. It's a change, in, like we're making a correction. And, and it gets people's attention, right? Typically, the stock market will reward that, yeah. This like, is only Microsoft's third, with, or once he has a replacement, this will only be their third CEO in their history, correct? Uh, with Bill I don't Gates, know. Steve Ballmer, and now... The new guy. Him. Whoever the new guy is. Can you see that? Look at that crack on my screen. Look at that. Yeah, that is oh. not a desktop background. Yeah. It's a crack. It's, yeah, that's a huge... I like crack. Gavin. He has like a circle in it. <laughs> well, I my, cracked mine right in the middle. You can see where my phone hit in the top left. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, and then it just spread Ooh, all pretty. the way across. It yeah, is kind of pretty. Yeah, I nice. hit mine in the middle. The crack went to every corner, and now the pixels are dying in like strips away from the crack, <laughs> so I can barely see the screen at this point. Are you, are you excited for the new Mac Pros, the, the trash can Mac Pros? I'm going to get one, absolutely. What are those coming out? I'm all, I'm, oh. I'm moving, I'm moving all back to PC. Really? It, and for gaming and I Steam saw, and all that, I'm really the PCs excited. PCs don't that look like a tiny little bin. I, yeah. gives I a saw fuck what it looks like. <laughs> you know how I bitched a that. long time ago about how desks don't co- incorporate enough technology? Go ahead. I saw a picture of a desk today on Reddit. Uh, it's like basically a desk with a clear, like plexiglass top, and then your PC components go in the desk. Oh, that's cool. So your yeah. computer is in the desk. It's got like spilters, so your case, spilters, speakers, and ports <laughs> uh, built into it. Um, so then I like, through the comments, I found the site that was selling it. And uh, you can customize it. So you could put up to two PCs in it. Uh, wow. wow. And the desk is like 1700 bucks. How much RAM would be in your desk? <laughs> I don't know. 32 gigs? 64? <laughs> <laughs> I can't take that question so seriously. I don't know. Hmm, let me think yeah, about yeah. that. Are you talking DDR2? <laughs> Yeah, so are you really going to buy that? I, that seems like a total waste of money to me. I wouldn't buy it, but I, I like the idea. Like, the desk is serving another function. I feel like the desk is just something dumb that sits so there. So does the desk just have one plug from it, and right. then you can plug all your peripherals into the desk? Right. Just, that is, I would do that just for the plugs alone. Plugs? You plugs. Know, for the plugs. Yeah, like this... You like plugs? Th- breaking this doesn't upset me at all. I've had this laptop for three years now. It'll be three years probably in November that I will have had this laptop. I'm almost making three years. And so it's like... That to me is like an acceptable amount of time to have That's a mobile. That's still like mo- seven hundred bucks a year, though. Yeah, but seven hundred bucks a year is like two bucks a day, and I, I use this thing yeah. about eight hours a day because I use it for all my work and my writing and all that stuff. Not my editing. I can't edit on this thing. This is you, a MacBook Air. I edit on my MacBook Air. I make slimmer guys on a MacBook Air. Get the hell out of <laughs> here! Do you really? <laughs> I do. Yeah, you probably have a newer one than I do. Though. I do. And also, it has Thunderbolt, and I just edit straight from a Thunderbolt drive, which is really fast. Yeah. And that real that it, that's all it is really. It's just drive speed. Yeah. I Mine only much. goes slow when I either open applications or use applications. There you go. That's the only, <laughs> Just don't do that's that. the only time it ever goes slow. The finder slow. looks awesome, though. Yeah. It it's runs like, super fast. My, my phone is a sack of shit as well now at this point. It lasts about a morning. The battery it lasts about four hours. And when it gets to 9 8%, it turns off. You know, I went through and, and I found a solution where when you first, when this thing would go to sleep and you'd open it, it had this thing where you had to wait to, for 
about 15 seconds before you could do anything. Because it's dumping all your active RAM into the SSD, right? It was because the big selling point for the MacBook Air was that it had a 30-day battery life. And to achieve that, they would immediately dump everything you were working on in active RAM, save it to the hard drive, and then shut everything down. And so they, had, so they could have that 30-day battery stat, yeah. which nobody gives a shit about. But it was like you could go in the console, which is basically you know, command prompt for uh, Macintosh, of Apple, and you could modify in a config file that don't go to sleep unless it's been shut down for like 24 hours or oh, something okay. like that. And so I did that and it instantaneously would boot up every single time. It like completely changed the one annoyance I had about the laptop was that. I make fun of it, but it's they actually also really finally good firmware updated. Uh, oh, did they? Yeah, to where uh, that doesn't happen anymore. And I saw, I, I went on Mac, uh, Gavin's laptop and I solved that problem for him and it really bothered him. Never said thank you. Just didn't even acknowledge it. Didn't work. it. You dick. You fl- it didn't work. You I didn't do it either. You sent me the link, and I think I did it wrong. Oh, you. <laughs> I t- didn't I do it for you? No. Oh, I thought I did it for you. I'll fix it for you. Thank then him. Then you can thank me. You, thank you, him for breaking your. Yeah, computer. you ungrateful piece of shit. shit. All for right. Not thanking me for the thing I didn't do. Well, we're oh. at about time. We have got to wrap up here. Oh. But also, what I'm excited about: the new iPhone potentially has 128 gigs of storage in it. Hey, how how are we hearing about the new iPhone? Did they make an announcement? Nah, it's just it's all leaks. The, Mac the press event is September 10th. You want to get a fight about that? Yes. I was right, by the way. You were right. I was Wait, right. What? You were right. Our old, like, two-year-old argument. About the iPhone 5, and there was two specs given for the iPhone 5. And I made the comment, which I was compelled to make just now, which is, I actually believe leaks about the iPhone 5, because usually when they happen, they all have always turned out to be correct. Uh-huh. And Gus, at the time, said, well, that's not always true, uh, because there's two specs given for the iPhone 5 that have been leaked. And I'm like, the iPhone 5's not even out. He's, and, and so the argument was... He was disproving what I said by telling me that there was something leaked that wasn't true, but that thing hadn't come out yet. There's a Based whole on, somebody animated it online. My brain hurts just yeah. by what you said. Yeah. The, the short version is I was I'm right. right. No, the short <laughs> version is you get faulty logic and you got lucky. Your, uh, right. your gum has really melted on our award, by the oh, way. Oh, Jesus. That is so gross. I, I can't believe this. It's got dust on it Ugh. and lint. Is um, it the heat that melted it? I don't know. So PAX is four days this is year. It so PAX comes see us. What does that mean? Did it actually melt? I guess it's what they should have asked. Did it actually melt? We're going to be at PAX and booth 6509, which right. is on the sixth floor. Our panel is at 1 p.m. Friday in the main ballroom. Come see us and uh, look I'll, at our question of uh, not allowed, or our board of yeah, not allowed Yeah, we're going to get a whiteboard for that. I'll be at the GameStop Expo wandering around. I'm not, we don't have a booth or anything. I'm that's just going to be Vegas. there hanging out. So that's in Vegas. I'll be there for that. Um, Gavin's going to be at the booth at PAX the entire time. So if you want a signature, just come by. He'll be there signing autographs the entire time. Have fun, buddy. Have fun with that. It's going to be good. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back with the patch on Wednesday and another episode of the RT Podcast next Monday. Bye. <laughs>